when there's something weird. And it don't look good. Who are you gonna call? It's the Globebusters. And now, your host, Bob, Santa Dude 60. Just because that isn't my particular opinion does not mean that it's wrong. This is where I get into, you know, the followers, the minions, if you will, the people that are not thinking for themselves. I won't tolerate that BS. And if you want to make videos about me, go right the hell ahead. I don't care. And Jaren from Jaronism. Uh, dumbed down and we've been given false information in school and in our books and in our history. So that's the biggest problem here is we've got a government agency that is stealing money, that is lying through their teeth, that is faking movies and calling them reality and has convinced 99% of the world that what they're talking about is true. It's the Globebusters. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Globebusters Season 2 and Episode Number 25. Your normal host, Bob, had business to attend to, so he's off today. So you're stuck with me. I'm Jaron from Jaronism, and joining me today, deep from a bunker on Whidbey Island, <laughs> about a 1,000 feet below sea level, and busy designing a game that asks the question, do we live in a Truman Show enclosure? The one, the only, Mr. Flat Earth Clues, Mark Sargent. Mark? How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. I did not expect that intro. That was that was quite clever. <laughs> that's good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I can't really complain. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, anything new and exciting in your parts? Uh, yeah. Since since we've spoken last, it's been a little while. Um, it's been a while. I've I've made. Oh, geez, I've been I've been cranking out a whole bunch of stuff. Basically, a shotgun pattern of of. Anything I can get uh, a hold of uh, on top of the Strange World stuff I'm doing every week. Uh, I also released a, a kind of a, a series of, you know, Flat Earth versus Mainstream because there have been some Hollywood producers kind of floating around trying to figure out how this thing is going to turn. You know, again, it, when you generate the numbers that Flat Earth is generating, you, you know, they can smell money. And so uh, I and so I started looking into it because I'm a big statistics nut. So I started releasing a couple short videos called uh, Flat Earth versus Mainstream, and kind of you know tongue in cheek putting Flat Earth against you know Emmy winners, Oscar winners, longtime franchises, right. and it does amazingly well considering there hasn't been a, a real marketing dollar spent on on Flat Earth. It's just a bunch of people. I mean, talk about a hard you know we carved out those numbers out of solid rock, basically. Yeah. You know, know. amazing, isn't it? And yeah. I've also seen that they're they're actually calling attention to it in other aspects. Like I don't know if you saw, um, I think no, it's the celebrity celebrity Big Brother. Yeah, out in England. Yeah, they've got a guy that's a flat earther. Yep. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And then the what, since we talked, uh, uh, one of the you know one of the tenors who was fired, right? Uh, the Canadian tenors for changing the Canadian a national anthem. So instead of saying Black Lives Matter, he changed it to All Lives Matter, yeah. uh, and held up a sign. And then they fired him. And then they dug into him, and it's like, oh yeah, by the way, he's also a flat earther. Uh, and it's been really, really interesting, you know, as far as the different people that have been, you know, the topic just keeps getting, you know, keeps tickling the, the fringes of, of mainstream. And I've been trying to follow it whenever I can. In fact, I've also done a couple, uh, reading narratives of some articles, the, like the, um, the flat earth ally, the Atlantic magazine, Sam Chris, and he's done articles before, but he would wrote a really long article kind of de delving into the, uh, uh, you know the what's what's going on behind flat Earth thinking, but it was but it was very positive, and then uh, also did the one what was the other one? Uh, oh yeah, the men who believe in flat Earth, which we'll, I know we'll talk about from that was the Gizmodo article, right? And and on top of that, I also am doing um, little small series because I don't have time to read all the emails that come into Strange World on mm -hmm. Truth, Truth Frequency Radio. I am doing my little side thing, and I'm basically just going through emails and not taking phone calls. And I'm doing little one-hour segments. In fact, I just finished the fourth one this morning. And I'm gonna, that's going to go up as soon as I'm done with you guys. And 
Uh, yeah, it's been really, really interesting. Uh, it's it the 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 producers you know that, that are out there looking for looking at this thing. They realize you know because the American media system they'll do a story on anything. They'll lit- or, they're, or I'm sorry, they'll do a show on just about anything. Right. And we've gotten to the point now, and I hate I'm, I hate to say this because it makes me sound like a bad American, but I hate reality television so much. <laughs> right. Because oh, yeah. because there's so many target demographics I don't care about. I mean. And so, I mean, there should, there's probably right now an underwater basket weaving housewives reality show in production right now. You want to get sick to your stomach, just go through YouTube and look at the guys that have the couple million subscribers and look at their most recent videos. And it's oh, yeah. how many boxes of cereal can I eat? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This challenge, take that challenge. Or- you know the guy I hate more than anybody on the i shouldn't say hate that sounds makes me sound like a terrible awful person but but i don't like him uh is because it doesn't make any any damn sense to me is pewdiepie i don't get it either i Um, don't know i now i've heard i've heard rumors that he had when he started he had a big marketing machine behind him and they basically created him you know he was like okay we'll we'll make this guy more popular than it really is because i've watched some of his videos (coughs) they're not that funny no, I don't even get him. Most of the guys that do it are just, oh, they're terrible. It's awful, but he's got a huge, I mean, and then they finally ended up giving him a real television show, an honest to God network. You know, it's, it's called uh, Scare or, or Prank. I think it's Scare PewDiePie, where oh, really? they're basically punking him. You have to <laughs> punk him, sort of like, and it's a, it's a complete ripoff of Jackass. Right. Where they were punking, you know, their parents and punking, you know, anyone they could. They'll, uh, it, was just, it was just awful. Anyway, so yeah, I've been doing a lot of that stuff, uh, and then, geez, how many videos have I done in the last couple of weeks? A whole bunch. I've done a lot. I have Seems done like a lot. I, then, I log on, there's um, a video by you up there saying- uh, Yeah, I, 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 I apologize, by the way, because I did this, that Flat Earth versus Mainstream, I think, for oh, geez, a couple of weeks in a row. <laughs> And people are getting tired of it. It was like, yeah, it was changing of the music, but people are starting to get, oh, okay, this is getting a little thin. You well, don't you have to do it. Everybody. I've, I've realized that this week. Um, I don't know if you saw um, the interview I had with the Brian Cox. Oh, my God. I did see that. Well, because I thought I was looking. I was going, really? You got Brian Cox? And then I was going, wait, why is Antonio? Oh, I get it. Now, the worst thing about it is, is if you've read the comments, and I still am getting comments today. I saw some this morning. Yeah. Um, people thinking that's really Brian Cox. Oh, my that, God. Are you serious? Oh, I'm dead serious. And people who thought that I was tricked that the whole time I thought it was Brian <laughs> Cox and that somebody played a joke on me. I, I mean, because they, I, I had to take a step back and just go, wow, I need to reevaluate uh, what I put out there. Um, it has a ton of thumbs downs. So people didn't like it. Um, eh, it happens. You can't, you can't win them all. Yeah, but, uh, you can. I mean, I've, I've got videos out there that uh, get, get smacked every once yeah. in a while. And I don't care. I don't, I still won't pull them. I was like, no, no, I, don't, I don't, I don't. I don't care. The one that the one that I did pull was Jonathan when and and I wasn't even on that show. It was when he Jonathan when he had his own show on TFR uh, mm-hmm. did a, did a transgender show, and I put it on my channel and it was just getting ripped because you know I mean the homosexual community only makes up ten percent of the population and so right. you know, the conspiracy world is pretty pretty strongly hetero. And they they did not like that, and, uh, and so Jonathan goes, please, I can't take the comments anymore. Please pull it down. <laughs> and I go, all right, fine, I'll pull it down. Yeah, so. no, um, and, yeah, I would never pull it down, and, and I w- it wouldn't stop me from doing something like that again. It was uh, kind of something we had talked about, a, you know, a week before that. I had mentioned something about Brian Cox, and it did. I told Antonio, have you seen him do the interview with Joe Rogan? So then he watched it and wrote me back and just said, man, that guy's so full of it, and. Um, he said, you know, I could really make my hair look like his. And I said, oh, we should do an interview where I just interview you. You act like him. He's like, I'm, I'll do that. I said, okay, maybe next week. You know? <laughs> it's and a- then we, we literally got on the phone and said, do you want to do it tonight? And he's like, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me see if I can do something to my hair. And then we, an hour later, we're doing it. So, yeah. um, and it was really funny because we actually uh, were on together for about a half hour before it started. And we were kind of scripting some stuff. Um, I was kind of writing, telling some questions I would ask him, and we were kind of making some jokes like the whole uh, Cox Zucker. Um, oh, yeah, that's too easy. Right, easy. So we wrote that stuff down, and we were ready to go. Well, right from the beginning, we weren't anywhere on script. We were just all over the place. And then everything that happened that was funny during that video was not scripted. It made me really think, like, man, if we would have just gone with the script, it wouldn't have been nearly as funny. Yeah. just so happens, like, all the uh, 
the math and meth thing completely ad lib um never mentioned before same thing with the whole nasa uh it was just uh, i think it turned out okay and i wanted people what i hope to do this week is put some of his answers next to brian cox because what a lot of people don't realize is the answers that he gave were actually answers that brian cox gave and so that's what's so funny about it is it sounds like he's just talking nonsense but really that's brian cox's answers to joe rogan's questions so very interesting wow. but i didn't get a, yeah a lot of people didn't like it so oh well um also did a video um i guess this is two nights ago now my days are all screwed up because i didn't go to bed till the middle of the morning mm -hmm. um but i did a what ended up being a five-hour video with uh, flat earth math so that was interesting i know a lot of people haven't had a chance to listen to the whole thing and there's nothing earth shattering in it but i do think that um maybe it's something you've noticed i've done a couple debates recently obviously the one on dread central yep we did oh, I, I, well, yeah, you, you got my little comment I sent to you on that. <laughs> where, oh, that guy, and I'm gonna try not to swear, but I, because I was up in, I was up in Canada listening to that uh, at a, at a friend's place, and we were listening to that, and we were just getting, I was just getting so riled up because I, I, it was, oh, it was painful. Yeah, and it was my first time, and you know, I learned a lot from it, and then we did one on TFR last or week before last um that i thought went much better uh with the globe believer and um cause something i've kind of realized and the reason i'm open to doing more of these now is i think these guys that believe in the globe don't realize how much damage they're doing um when they have these these little debates because if if you don't know everything about the model which yeah. most people don't right nope. so most globe believers are just animate believers that flat earth is stupid uh, globe has been proven and so they get into these conversations and i think they get stuck at places and i think it looks incredibly bad on them because oh, yeah you're you're absolutely right they're well they're resting on their laurels is right. what they're doing they're going in I'll, I'll use the not to interject too too abruptly here but when um when stanton friedman did his thing with with me i knew i knew full well he wasn't going to do any homework ba basically what you're saying is if they do not if they do not have their ducks in a row they are gonna get there they have no chance because all the flat earthers they've got tons of you know tons of stuff on their side just ammunition getting ready to use and so stanton he not only did he not have his everything ready to go but he didn't even know what the model looked like even in, in the slightest so 10 minutes in he stops he goes whoa 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 are we talking about this like it's a real thing like it's like <laughs> like it's like it's an actual physical model and i go yeah yeah, we are. And he goes, it's not just the simple years of flat. Exactly. Like exactly. He stops. He goes, well, how does that work? <laughs> it's like, oh, no. And then it didn't turn into a debate. And then the debate part of it ended because then it was me just explaining to him. Right. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, this is, well, what about the stars? What about this? And then, you know, then, of course, the awkward question. It's like, well, I had an astronaut write the forward on my last book. <laughs> I was like, uh, he goes, are you telling me he's a liar? And I was going, I don't want to tell you that. But right. what, what do you want me to say? Like, it's like there's guys like like a duck and quacks like a duck. You yeah. Know? Sooner or later, you're you're going to have to, you know, somebody's going to be lying before this, this is over. A lot of people are going to be lying, actually. Yeah. But, and I just think that it, it looks bad. And it also helps. If anybody's on the fence and they listen to any of these kind of conversations, the one with flat earth math last night, you'll, or the night before, you'll, um, you'll definitely see why we don't any longer believe what they do, which is simply because we got tired of just repeating things without having evidence to back it. Yeah. Um, a couple of points that came up in that conversation that I thought were key was one of them. And he was explaining the Aristosthenes experiment and how he went about it and I was asking him, you know, you've seen pictures of crisp crispicular rays coming down out of the clouds, right? Mm -hmm. So they're clearly looking like they're coming from a local sun. They're clearly diverging and they're certainly not hitting the ground parallel. So it appears. And yet the story tells us that Aristophanes knew that those rays were hitting parallel. So my question, you know, to Flat Earth Math was, well, how did he know that the sun was far? And he said, oh, that was well known by that time. To, and I said, no, 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 it wasn't. I mean, even Copernicus thought it was 3 million miles. And then he says, well, you know, they knew it was spinning. And I said, no, 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 no. hold on. You need to go back and look at your fact. They did not know the earth was spinning in 300 BC. Yeah. And I yeah. said, so to me, it seems like a completely fake story because you've got on one end, somebody saying, well, these rays are coming in parallel. 
okay, that's great. So what is the reasoning for anyone who sees crispicular rays to think that the sun is an infinite distance away? And if he did think that, then he wouldn't think that the sun goes around the earth, which would have been something that he would have thought at that time. So it just makes me realize that the whole story has been fabricated. It's been invented. The guy probably, probably didn't even exist. So that was one thing that came up that I thought was good because, of course, Flat Earth Math didn't have a, an answer for that. Um, one of the other things was uh, in regards to the, and maybe you have an answer for this, hmm. why in the world NASA continues to show us pictures and videos of these training exercises in the pool with all these um, scuba divers around? And it just has never made sense to me. And I was asking him, why would you, if why? you're going to train somebody and they're going to have their life on the line, out in space, yeah. then at some point you have to put them into a training environment to where they don't have help everywhere. And that's something they don't do. They, they, they always have these guys, they're there to lift their leg, they're there to move the cord, pull the rope, yeah. hand them a tool. I'm like, where's the training that is like live or die? Oops, you got your, your leg caught, you, you die. You yeah. know, or you, it just it doesn't make yeah, you tear you, you tear a hole in your suit, you die. Oh yeah, no, that's one of my, my well, Okay. What you mean? Why do they do the training things or why do they show us the training things? Well, I guess they show us the training things. They don't want to waste production value, but why do they do the training things at all? Also, you know, to make it look like they're actually doing something, but you're absolutely right. The, the, something that I had harped on since day one was, which always bothered me, which was with the Apollo missions, why they weren't way more serious on the moon right. and moving a lot slower and not in and taking great care because if you're on the moon eventually you're going to get that weird realization right we're going to assume the moon is real here for one second right uh, if you're really on the moon and you're looking back at earth you're going to get that moment i don't care how much training you have you're going to get the moment it's like look holy, at the earth holy crap that's the earth and i'm here and there's a chance you know how do i get back Am right. I going to get back? I want to get back. You're going to count the hours. That's all you're going to do. It's like, do I have enough oxygen? Do I have enough oxygen? How's my systems doing? How's my systems doing? You're, that's all you're going to care about. Oh, yeah, fine. You're going to do some rock samples and, and all the other crap. Are you really going to do anything else? You know, Are you going to take a ton of pictures? Are you going to play golf? Are you going to start singing and jumping, doing all this other crap? They were the exact opposite. They had, it was like they didn't have a care in the world. No, 11, actually, if you look at all of them, was probably the best one, the most reserved. After that, they just got stupid. Yeah. Then they started, you know, falling on purpose and jumping up and landing on their backs and oh, driving yeah. around the rover. Um, if you fall, the first the world. Yeah, if you fall, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have your buddy check out your suit. That's right. it. That's all you're going to do. Anything broken? Dude, is there, how are my gauges? How are my gauges? That's all you're going to care about. And they didn't. And to, to your point, where... That should be happening now. You know, everybody that it's, it goes even to the ISS where it's like, why in the world are you wearing khakis and polo shirts and socks? Right. No fear in the world. No fear in the world. You're, you're not in your spacesuit. You're not worried about anything. You know, nobody seems jittery at all. You know, yeah. one little micrometeor and you think these guys would be like, they just go into complete freak out mode. Nothing seems to surprise them. Nothing makes them, you know, you, you'd see this in the camera. You know, all of a sudden they hear a noise, like right, a weird creak or a sound. That, yeah, it'd be like, you know, all of a sudden their expression would change. You know, instead of talking to school children and joking around, they'd be like, wait a minute, what was that? <laughs> and to your point, when they, you know, I think one of the biggest proofs for me early on looking at the moon landings was the fact that the 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 word Earth wasn't even said any time on the actual EVA. So from the time that, you know, uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, you know, get off and they're on to the moon, that nobody said, take a picture of the Earth. Yeah. Look yeah. at the Earth. Look at home. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that would be the first thing you would do. Yeah. I mean, without a doubt. And they just don't remember to do that they get yeah. off they're talking about the uh you know they're giving their little speeches making their little one-line statements yeah. and then they start going about laying these cords and moving cameras and, oh, and build, for don't forget about building the car no i'm talking about 11 right now oh 11 oh, okay gotcha yeah i'm actually not sure about whether or not they said look at the earth and the other ones i just know 11 and looking at the transcripts there was no conversation between aldrin and armstrong in regards to the, look at the earth over there's the earth t let's take a picture of the earth and i think they only took 
if I remember right, there's only one or two pictures on, from Apollo 11 of the Earth. Yeah. If I and I think they're they both look kind of funky. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't they weren't the official ones ever used. It was only, no. Yeah. And so I you know I always thought that was interesting because it's just not what would happen in reality. Like you just said, that's going to be the most unbelievable realization when you step on the moon and turn and see Earth 250,000 miles away. Yeah. Um, and they don't ever have that moment. And that just makes you yeah. say, hey, this tells me that they're in a, a sound stage in Nevada to where the last thing they're thinking about is looking in the sky and saying, hey, look at Earth. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> the Apollo thing just bugged me on, on so many levels. And I, and I, I was really grateful for Flat Earth later because it, ans it answered the questions for me, which was, you know, it's like, because I couldn't figure out, no matter what I came up with, it wasn't good enough to why. Why would the Americans fake it? Why do you fake it? Why do you spend all that time and money just so you can say you were there? I mean, yeah, it's good, but it isn't great. And then, yeah, then finally it's like, oh, I get it. You, you have to fake everything. You have to literally fake everything from the ground up. It wasn't, right. ju it wasn't just Apollo. It was everything. And, I certainly think it was, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, so, uh, you know, the, having those conversations with the Globers and bringing some of this stuff up and um, getting others to see that they really just buy into everything that they're they're told without even thinking about it, you know, yeah. and, and when you bring up these Aristophanes and he says, oh, well, just because, you know, that that's a fake or that's a folklore doesn't mean the earth is flat. And I said, okay, you know, I'll give you that. But what it does start to show me is there's tons of instances where we're finding out that we were lied to as far as being told that water goes down one way in the southern hemisphere versus you know another way in the northern yeah. you know those things that were taught to us is like fact they were studied they were science as kids and then you get to this age and you realize that it's not true and then you find out something like aristophanes which they push all the time and carl sagan has his video on it and everybody always brings it up and when you really look into it you realize it just isn't possible yeah and you know Go ahead. Uh, well, the thing I was going to throw out there was, before I forget, was that yeah, does does what net does what NASA has been doing as far as what they're what they've been lying about? Does it prove a flat Earth? No, it doesn't. But it goes a long way to and use the Shakespeare quote: uh, "He doth protest too much." They've gone way out of their way to not show us what the Earth looks like. And right. It's like, why would you spend that much time avoiding showing us what the earth looks like? Because if it was easily faked or if it's easily stretched, I mean, if even if it was close, there was somebody um, I talked to recently that said, look, even if Neil deGrasse Tyson is model, you know, the whole pear shaped thing. And I know he's backtracked on that, but let's say it was pear shaped. Even if it was pear shaped, you could Photoshop that baby back into a sphere. Right. That wouldn't be that tough to do. But they went, I mean, they went 43 years with not yeah. showing us anything and that's why they're such a, a quarry now because they also can't when they put out some of the crappy footage that they put out in the early 80s yeah. shuttle missions things like that when you go back and watch those and some of them are hard to find they're they're definitely off the um the interwebs yeah. uh, the only time you can find them is if somebody had an old vhs uh, recording of it but what the reason is is because some of it looks so bad and that's why they can't just go and make it look now no. completely cgi completely futuristic because people will say hey wait a second how did this how did this you showed us this first and now we get shown this so they have it, to kind of keep it kind of it's yeah you're you're absolutely right that's why the um the moon thing which i talked about uh not necessarily a little bit in the clues but other uh, other things in interviews where you once yeah once you show because everything on the internet sticks once you show people the apollo stuff you've got to keep it looking that way because you know, if you if you and if you go back, that's why you haven't gone back to the moon. That's why you haven't done a movie on the moon. And we've got a uh, interesting little thing. Too bad it's not going to be for a year or two. But uh, how are they going to fake this whole landing on an asteroid? Oh, that whole piece of crap. Oh yeah, this, <laughs> it's you know, be when they when they release that. I mean, you know, well as an, as you know now, I mean they're releasing stories literally every day. Yeah. And that asteroid one just I just just howled when I when I saw it. It's like really. And they're already building it up. I have an interview ready to go where the guy's saying we've got three cameras. We're we're gonna film the whole thing. We we're gonna land on it. We're gonna take a sample and then take out. It's like come on. Yeah, I mean, oh, the, the worst part was, yeah, they were saying, oh, no, and we're going to take off and we're going to bring that sample back here. I'm going, gonna you back. are? Oh, boy. They How? can't get internet to Africa, but they can send a spacecraft to an asteroid going at some ungodly speed 
yeah. somehow orbit it, somehow land it, somehow dig a sample out, just tuck that away and then take off. I mean, yeah. give me a break. Take off and make it back to Earth? Really? How, yeah. I mean, I, how, how is that? You're going to use the, the, the asteroid's propulsion, you know, the, the forward momentum and just kind of punch off that even, thing? Even oh. SpaceX, with all their glory around them and everything, even SpaceX has not relaunched one of their landed rockets yet. No, and no. we're talking about this thing's going to land on a foreign body with an unknown gravity. It's going to land there, stay there for a little while, and then have to take off in the same sentence. Yeah. I mean, it's so ridiculous that anybody yeah, would ever buy that. Yeah. Again, that's why, of course, you know, the Orion Project, uh, for anyone who's new listening to this, you know, the Orion Project is the Mars program, the, the manned Mars program that mm -hmm. we've been kicking down, that we've been kicking that can down the road for years. And it's never, ever, ever, hang on, wait for it, ever going to happen because it can't. You can't. Uh, you cannot fake, and, and the reason, and you've heard me say this before, you can't fake something like that because it has to be a production and a production is shot out of sequence and you're going to make a mistake. Someone right. is going to make a mistake and it's going to get on the internet and someone's going to point out, you know, some, some guy in the middle of freaking Kansas at three in the morning is going to say, it's like, Hey, wait a minute. That's not supposed to be there. He takes a screenshot and it's over. It's and, and then the credibility just goes down the tubes. You cannot do a, a, a Mars mission, a manned Mars mission. And even if you were going to, people are still, it's like, why are, what? Oh, sorry, I could, I could go on this forever. But <laughs> I know, me the, the, the moon stuff, it's like, why aren't mm -hmm. there bases on the moon? Why did the Cold War, again, totally fake. Why right. did the Cold War, the space race slash Cold War stop when the Americans made it to the moon? Because the Russians is just packing in. Let's let's not finish it. The Russians, you, you know how it was supposed to go. Oh, then the Russians get there. Then the Americans, you know, how many people are going to, you know, we have 10, the Russians have eight. Is this the start of a new moon cold war? That's how the whole thing would have played out. But no, 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 no. It was the exact opposite. It was like once the Americans got there, everyone quit. No one ever went back. And Why would that happen? It, just it wouldn't, with the exception of, you know, the Chinese probe that's supposedly been there for three years. Yeah, but if, if it was possible, let's say somebody got there in 69, then believe me, somebody, China, Japan, of Russia, would, would already be there because whoever has the moon has all the has all the, the marbles. They, I mean, because you can... I got a little side thing for you. I don't know if I ever well, told nice. you this. There was a, so there's, there's several companies out there, not just SpaceX and Virgin Galactic. There's quite a few other, you know, oh, yeah. startup companies that have been trying to get on in this. They're competitors to like SpaceX. And one of them was called Interorbital. And you probably heard me talk of you know that I had a conference call. There was a guy from Germany that got me in a conference call with the president and VP of Interorbital. They're out of California, mm -hmm. and they were going to send some moon stuff. You know, they're charging. Oh my God, was they're like charging eight thousand dollars a gram in advance for moon rocks that they were going to harvest and come back with, but you had to pay in advance eight thousand right. eight thousand a gram, which is ridiculous, and. They said it was interesting because they, they said they went to some meeting with all the competitors that were that were going to be, you know, doing the whole, you know, the whole potential moon thing and SpaceX competitors. And NASA was there and they were really specific about telling them, oh, yeah, by the way, no matter what you're thinking about doing, don't try to go to the Sea of Tranquility. Don't <laughs> land anywhere near there. And I'm going... Why, why would they say that? You know, why would you ever say that? Because one, that's the only interesting thing. If you believe in the moon missions, that's the only thing interesting on there. That's where all the American stuff is. Right. You know, so why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you go there? And to that effect, um, the Chinese probe, which has supposedly been there, you know, they've got supposedly a moon rover, you know. Oh, I've seen the pictures and the videos. Oh well, yeah. You know, but they, it's like, what? they also aren't in the sea of tranquility. And it's like, why? That's the only thing you would do. You would go to Sea of Tranquility, you would accidentally knock over the American flag, and would be this huge international brouhaha. You know, it'd be this, uh, oh, what did the Chinese imply by knocking over the flag? Was it really an accident? You know, we want to know. And they're not going to do that because they can't, because, well, one, there's nothing there. And two, they'd have to try to recreate the whole thing. And if, again, if there was something out of place, you know, some nerd, it's going, well, you know, the car shouldn't be that far away from the from the vehicle, you know, from the, the landing <laughs> pad and all this stuff. Someone would figure that out. So instead, no, the Chinese are, you know, rover is going around doing nothing, just roving around. Right. Taking pictures of it, nothing. One, one of two things is going to happen, or actually maybe even both. But my predictions would be, and it has been this for a while, that I thought they're going to have some sort of catastrophe in space, be it 
Oh, okay. right. I remember you and I talking about that. Yeah. yeah, some sort of death or something, because then at that point they can say it's too dangerous for people now. We can only send robots to go out there. Yeah. And, and sending a robot mission to Mars, well, they've already got one technically there, so it would be the same kind of production. Um, and I think they could still fake that and get people to buy it, but not a manned mission. That's why That's why they're sending this probe to go to an asteroid, because that's going to be another robot and the video, they can fake that, and people aren't going to be able to really question it. And so they're doing that. The yeah, other yeah. prediction I have, though, and this is something that kind of came from somebody in an email, and I kind of thought about it and said, man, that does sound interesting. Mm -hmm. He was saying that, um, that, that you know, because a lot of people believe that this flat Earth was input into the uh, mainstream or that it's some sort of psyop. Sure, but sure. this guy's kind of opinion was that. But what he said was once NASA found out that it had come out or that it, people were talking about it, that they're going to let us keep talking about it because then they're going to come out and say you know, shortly that the reason they've been faking the ISS or the reason they're showing us fake pictures is because we're in communications with aliens who are yeah 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 around the earth or they are um, watching the earth or whatever. And if they showed us any real video of the ISS that we would see these aliens and then they're going to say, and look at we there's aliens around the planet and these people think that the earth is flat. Yeah. And yeah. so that's going to kind of be their play as to how funny it is that because they were hiding this footage, um, people went as far as to think the earth was flat because of it. So I thought it was interesting that he said that because I said, no, that's definitely one way they could play it. And of course you would have res rhetoric and all his buddies laughing and heeing and hawing and saying how funny it was that we all fell for thinking it was a flat earth when actually it's because there's aliens out there. And, yeah. and, even, and even then though, there, if, if that, if that, was, that the case, was the case, which, which, it, is, which it is, the vindication the, would be, um, us bringing it up right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, well, it's, it, it would be silly for them to, to the, I mean, at that point, the aliens thing would overshadow every other topic. So even, even coming down on the flat earthers, what are you going to say? I mean, yeah, the, the flat earth, you can say the flat earth, you know what? I'm still, even aliens wouldn't wouldn't be reason enough to hide the entire shape because if the shape again if the earth is shaped like a globe then why don't why didn't you spend the last 43 years just taking rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of film of it oh you know, yeah we've and we've got i mean if you believe the satellite situation remember we've got we've got stereo forward and stereo stereo behind right. they could take pictures at any time you know yeah, and, and the other thing is that i've at least for me, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Is if the way they've got it all set up, because you have a lot of people saying, well, it's because of the secret space mission. Oh, or the, the, the Richard Hoagland argument. Right. Which is so, is just defeated right off the bat because, yeah. again, why wouldn't they just, if, and if that was the case, they would just need to show us the earth with real images and none of us would be here. We'd all shut up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. At that point, that, which is why Richard Hoagland completely bailed on the debate I was supposed to do with him on <laughs> right. um, Dark 30, I think, which was if if you have a secret space, space crib, fine, they can take pictures of the earth. You can right. say that the civilian program, you know, actually took them and it's fine. Who cares? But, but to have nobody take a picture right. of the earth for 43 years. That, or nobody go back to the moon too. I mean, that's another and, one. Yeah. Right? Nobody go back to the moon for forever. Right. Know? I mean, and, there was... I mean, again, and I've said this a million times because people say, oh, you guys will never believe anything. You guys will just say, and I said, they, they've, because they've already had their opportunities. Yeah. Um, meaning when you go now and if, okay, now if somebody goes and sends a probe to the moon and shows your, yeah, some of us are going to have big questions about it, but they had their opportunity. Meaning that when we go looking for things, when I went searching, could the earth be flat? Let me look into this. Just like you did. The yeah. first place we went is where's the images of earth? Okay, wait, these are composites. Then where's the video from the moon? There isn't one. Did we return to the moon? We didn't return. And these are things where they dropped the ball to where now, and this is something I brought up with Flat Earth Math last night, same thing with the South Pole webcams. Um, pretty big deal. I'm actually making a video be out later today yeah. um, about the South Pole webcams, and we can actually watch a couple of them uh, in a few minutes here. Mm -hmm. But when you go there and you look at any and they have 2011 through 2014 and you can go through november december january which is the southern summer which means there's has to be a 24-hour sun it has to go around you you're on the continent it has to go around you and there is not any video evidence of it that's not cut that's not tore up yeah. and the reason why is because it may be 24 hours of light in antarctica 
That I'm not arguing with. There is 24 hours of light. I've seen it on webcam footage, but there's not a 24 hour sun. Yeah. The sun comes in from the north, uh, the northeast. It goes across the horizon and leaves to the northwest, exactly mm -hmm. as the flat earth would dictate. It does not go around you. And the shadows prove it. And when you, you know, he was telling me last night, well, yeah, but if they, if they, somebody goes and takes a webcam footage now, you won't believe it. And he said, you're damn right. Because they've been down in Antarctica since the late 50s. Yeah. So why in 50 years video foot, video recording has been available the whole time? How can there be no visual video footage of a damn 24 hour sun, which is the proof of the globe? You know, if there's an Antarctic continent at the bottom of the globe where the sun goes around it, that's their proof. That's all you need, but they don't have it. Yeah. And so, you know, they, they've dug themselves into a corner to where now, yeah, we already went looking for this evidence. It wasn't there. You can try and produce it now if you want, but you're going to look silly. You know, that's all it comes down to. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, for me, and, and you know, again, you and I have talked about this, where also the moves, I've never seen a conspiracy where the powers that be actually respond to, to YouTube videos where you know where we said look there's no pictures of the earth from space there's no pictures of the earth rotating from space and then all of a sudden they released two things which were very very interesting one was of course the moon transit in front of the earth that what 20 frames 21 frames of, okay. of utter crap it was awful you know and, and including a still shot of basically the same thing and it was terrible it, you know from a from a, a satellite that appeared out of nowhere that was a million miles away but during that rotation uh, there was no weather morphing, you know that part. But then they also released almost in the in the same. I don't know if it was the same week was the Himawara satellite, where it was geostationary, which didn't show the Earth rotating, but showed the weather moving. Oh, so right. I'm going. I'm going. Okay, so you can show us the Earth rotating without the weather moving, or you can show us it pretty much staying still but the weather moving. Why can't you do both? Right. I know. I know that it takes some supercomputer to do some of the weather patterns, but you know this is 2016. You should have the budget. You Especially should. when you're just talking about camera and photos, camera and video. Yeah, yeah. You know, but they but they release these things because of what we were asking for, you know. And 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 again, I still think there's something fishy about the fact that that when, when Neil deGrasse Tyson went on Comedy Central to do his little rant, which will go down in infamy, I'm sure, which was the dropping the mic rant. <laughs> yeah, dropping the mic. Yeah, you know, this is gravity. But he, tough guy. But he, yeah, exactly. But he didn't bring any material with him. He no. didn't do any video. He didn't do any still shots. He didn't do any graphics. It's like, look, the 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 TV watching public, especially the Americans, is very visual. You know, we need visual aids. That's that's what we do. And you're, he could have done it in two seconds. All he had to do was re release ten seconds of that Himawari footage, and. That would have should that should have done it, you know, for the most of the American public. Like, oh, look, there's the earth, there's the weather moving. It's, you know, it's, I'm convinced, but he didn't do that. So, why not? Why don't you bring your best stuff to the table? It, it's it just kind of bugged me, yeah. And I think it's weird too. And I'm not sure if it's because, at least in my opinion, I know a lot of people disagree with me about this, but I don't think that those guys know. Um, that Neil knows, I don't think Neil knows, no, he because, knows something. Well. It's I like, mean, because because and I'm not I'm not going to argue with you about it. Right. But but in this case, he knew. Look, if I was going to go on television and I was the front man for NASA, I know he's not an official NASA employee. I'm sure he gets mm -hmm. something from. But if I was going to go on television and try to shut down flat Earth, I would bring I don't know at least five to seven minutes of visual aids with me, and I would but, bring but stuff. Would you if you thought it was just silly? I thought it was. I listened, but I, I listened to that argument he had. It was about it was distance and horizon, and I know the audience was coached and it sounded like they knew they knew what he was talking about. They didn't, right? They they had no idea what he was talking about. But that was just it. Why you know full well how dumb the audience is. No offense to other people that are listening out there, but I mean, there's a lot of mouth breathers out there, <laughs> and they aren't going to know anything. So why why not make it easy? Why not try to shut the whole thing down with something easy? You know, I know you probably said, well, because you know maybe he he overestimated the the viewing public and he was trying to do nerd humor, but but I mean because he got the stuff in the end is like, look, this is gravity. So you knew that he you know he had scripted it. You know he didn't write he didn't write a lot of that stuff himself, but. Uh, I th I think he knows something now. What does he know? Uh, same thing with the the astronauts though, the ISS guys. I mean they they know they're faking something. Those now, guys. 
No, I, I yeah, kinda... they don't know why because you know they. I, I firmly believe that they learned from the Apollo program and how um, the Apollo astronauts, the, you know, the 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 soul crushing that the whole concept does to you. Uh, I just think what people will do for money would shock anybody, but it really shouldn't shock us because if you just look at what people would do for five hundred bucks, what yeah, people yeah. would do for a thousand, what people would do for ten thousand, hundred thousand, when you start talking millions there's really not a lot of things that a lot of people wouldn't do. That's so true. if you can get up past a million and you're offering somebody, hey, you're going to be famous. You're going to get called a scientist. There's no way anybody can prove that what we're doing isn't real. Yeah. And we just, you know, because it just doesn't seem to me that any of these astronauts are the cream of the crop. Like they should be. If there's you know, it's such an elite group that NASA picks, then we should be seeing people that are just top of the line smarts, um, cream of the crop and they're not they're really if you listen to any of them i've never even heard one that sounds impressive to me they all seem like imbeciles yeah yeah, yeah they yeah. yeah you're right and they you're right for for such an elaborate operation they they should not be making mistakes they're making no and they're making huge mistakes by the way people are doing things for money should it should i bring the joe rogan thing up now or did you want to wait yeah and it's a good time yeah well because you know the joe rogan thing and, and yeah i did make a video called flat earth enemy joe rogan uh, and normally I don't, I try to stay positive. I try to stay, you know, the glass half full, but he, the guy will not stop. He's done, I think at least 10 shows where he has brought it up to either to his panel or his guest. And that's it's, all in like the last two, three weeks. Uh, no, well, some before, some were before that, but I mean, he's, but he's 10, but 10 fairly recently. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. But then he decides a couple days ago that he's going to lead the show with his scientific expert, uh, I think it was Michael Shermer, and he was going to lead the show with that. And somebody, again, a listener had sent that to me. And well, I always I, get confused on Shermer. He's not the one you debated, right? No. No, no, no. Which one? You, you're talking about some... Uh, the, Mark... The convict. Oh, no, no, no. That was... Oh, crap. No, hang on. That was... Because one of them owns the Skeptic website and one of them owns the magazine. Sure, you know, his that. his was the the skeptic website. He was the guy that oh, and you're gonna have to listen to the show on Dark Thirty. Uh, mm -hmm. It was Brian Dunning. Yeah, Brian Dunning. Yeah, Brian Dunning. And Brian Dunning was, <laughs> yeah, he ran a skeptic website, but he had also in his previous life he did some marketing. He owned a marketing company that was tied to eBay. And he basically embezzled eBay out of a whole bunch of money and drug it out for as long as he could right. to where the, his attorney said, look, you might as well just plead guilty to this thing because they'll, they'll have you dead to rights, but, but keep it going as long as you can. And so he did. He pled guilty. He went to prison. <laughs> and then he got out of prison. He basically went to prison for fraud. Right. And he gets out of prison. And when Richard Hoagland bailed on the debate, they were looking for somebody and they bring him in. And and I forgot, why'd you bring him up again? Because he was during the day talking about the uh, the other guy Shermer, the guy that, that Joe Rogan. Oh was. yeah, no, he's not Shermer. It's, it's it was Brian Dunning. Dunning. But but anyway, Brian Dunning, what he had an interesting quote though during that debate where, you know, he and I were were way more civil to each other than that Mark D'Antonio guy who was just a, a idiot. And he said, because I asked him, I go, look, if you had to, and this is for anybody out there that's that wants to debunk flat earth, and by the way, that there's your t-shirt for you. It's like, you know, uh I I'm a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. Nobody goes into flat earth thinking, thinking that it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. But I, I asked Michael, look, if you had to take the average person on the street and convince them oh, right. that, that, it, that, the earth, that the earth was a globe, how would you do it? And he, he really stunned me with the answer. I, regardless whether you know, he was convicted of fraud or not, his answer was sincere. Yeah. He said, I couldn't do it. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, well... He goes, I couldn't do it on the ground. There's no way you convince you can convince anyone 100% that the earth is a globe on the ground. He, Flat Earth Math brought that up in our conversation last night. He thought that was kind of his turning point. He said, listening to you oh, talk debate, about Brian scientist, um, Yeah, because when that was said, he got upset and kind of thought to himself, there's got to be a way to do it. And that's why he said he's made his channel and why he's made the videos he's made is all because of that statement um, when he said, no, there's no way to prove it 
yeah from somebody on the ground yeah yeah and i thought that was it. yeah he goes he goes you've got to give him 20 million dollars and send him to space and i go well yeah, actually technically i think you could buy your way in for cheaper than that but and then you got to sign a disclosure agreement you're never going to do anything <laughs> but, you, but 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 what was interesting about that was because i thought when he said that i was going you know that makes sense because even um you know the infamous vsauce video that's you know that we're just giving we're just giving views to that guy because uh, he's he's the number it's the note because his video was out there long before right. flat earth was out there and and uh he's got it's actually not a bad video for it's flat. not no he it's not he doesn't tear into it but what no. was interesting was is that even vsauce said you know the sticks and shadow argument isn't isn't a lock either because right. uh, or, or you know size and perspective because it's yeah yeah, the, yeah, the sun, if the sun is, and I'll, I'll give people a, kind of a, a weird way to, to, to do this yourself. If the sun is hundreds of thousands of miles wide and 93 million miles away, it will cast this. Or it could be much, much closer and right. very, very small by comparison. It could be 30 miles wide. And people go, no, I don't get it. I go, okay, think of it this way. You take a pen. We've all done this as kids, right? I just thought of this the other day. I could take let a me, pen and let me and you, before you go on that, I'm just gonna oh yeah I'm playing the video of the South Pole um, webcam. So I'm oh, gonna okay. start at October or November of 2010 just so people can watch. But go ahead and continue. Oh, okay. So you take a pen and I'll do this in a debate with somebody if I get a chance. Um, you take a pen, and we all done this, right? And you hold it up, you know, like like two feet away from your eye, right? And you say, Oh yeah, it looks pretty small. But then you you bring it in real close to your eye, right? Okay. So the question is, is the pen really, really big? Or is it really close to your eye? And, and people say, well, I don't get it. And it's like, well, think of it this way. We know it's a pen and we know the size of a pen, so that doesn't trick us. But if you take a ball, any sort of ball, and you hold it at a certain distance with no perspective thing in the background, right. you have no idea how far away it is. And no. that's, that's the argument. I, it's the, what, what do I call it? It's the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean argument, where if anyone's gone to Disneyland, and people go, where is he going with this? If you <laughs> go to Disneyland and you've been, if anyone's gone to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, the very end of that ride, you get to this big open uh, uh, um, inlet, right? Where there's pirate ships way off in the distance and there's moon and stars, right? And I challenge anybody, right, to go in there and tell me how far away that moon is in Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They're going, why? why? I go, because you don't know. There's no, the perspective is all about perception. It's like that moon could be 50 feet away. It could be 50 yards away. It could be five miles away, depending on how big the, stu how big the studio is. You don't know. And so when it comes to the sun and the moon, yeah, it's like, yeah, the sun, not to, not to quote a religious line here, but um, yeah, God created the sun and the moon. But NASA told you how big they were. You right. Know, they were you, the, could, you could land on one and stand there, even if you're upside down or sideways or exactly. that's, I mean, that's what the moon does in, in its under underhanded way. And this yeah. is something I didn't realize till even, you know, kind of recently that miss and I were driving. It just hit me that if we didn't go to the moon, then, you know, the reason they teach us that is so that kids look up there, they see the moon, they see it's a ball and they say, Oh, and people obviously went there and landed a space shuttle or you know, landed a little spacecraft on there and got out and walked around. So then you can live on a ball. It's, it's kind of a, um, yeah, yeah. you know, one of those underhanded things. And then if you think about it and say, we didn't go to the moon, then it all starts to unravel because then you're, do we, can't we even walk on a ball? Is that even possible? Right. I right, want to point yeah. out a couple things real quick here. Sure. If people want to notice, um, this is actually supposedly the footage, and I emailed the person, and I was showing Miss of the email, emailed the head of this website and told them, hey, I've, I'm a teacher, and I'm trying to teach them my class about the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. I said, no matter which video I go to yours, you've cut it. And I said, I need the actual full film. Can you give me the full film? And she responded and said, no, that doesn't exist, that we cut it because uh, when it's just a black screen, we need to uh, save space on our servers, so we cut it out. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, you're cutting the middle of the day. You're not, it's not black. It's, it's during the summer. I said, so where's the, can you just give me one day of complete video footage? And she said, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Doesn't that so remind you, you of something? Yeah. And if that, you watch, that, if you look at the date up here, um, you can see the time going 23, 13, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 13, 14, 21, 22, 23, 16, 17, 18, 19. So they're cutting half the day out. Now, here's an even crazier part, because this should prove, this is actually all the proof I need to teach anybody it's a flat earth. Once you look at the flat earth model and you understand 
Now picture, we have the sun coming in from the northeast, coming across the horizon and leaving to the northwest. Mm -hmm. Now, when that's the case, you would see these shadows get extremely long as the sun leaves because it's going further away. So watch the shadows. They'll start off short, then they get really long. And that's because the sun is going away from you. Yeah, if it was yeah. coming around the back of us, why would the shadow get long? It, it, it is proof positive, and you can see them cutting every time. The shadows start to go around in a circle, cut, goes back to the start. Goes around in a circle, cut, back to the start. And the only reason, the absolute only reason to do this is you are lying about the sun. Meaning, yes, the day is staying bright. We see it staying bright out, but the shadows are not doing what the sun would call them to do, meaning there is no sun going behind us. Interesting. Um, interesting. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like the best proof that we have. Um, let me go to like December 2012 here. And these are right. So, you know, December 2012 is right smack dab in the middle of their summer. So we've got the sun should be going around in a circle. Watch this. Here comes the flag. It goes off to the right. And then you'll see the thing go click. And then it starts over here again. So it's only wow. doing about a little more than 180 degrees of a turn. And again, watch the length of the shadow. So watch when this one comes around here. It's long. Now it's going to get short. Then it gets long. Why is that? Because it's coming from your north east, which means you're going to have a long shadow to start. It's going to come across the horizon and it's going to take off to the northwest, which is going to cause another long shadow. It absolutely matches in every way the azimuthal equidistant, the Gleason's map, if you will, yeah. um, that kind of idea of a uh, Antarctic surrounding or an Antarctic edge. And again, a lot of people have uh, even said, well, could Antarctica be a continent? You know what? It could be. It could be a little continent on, you know, picture the Gleason's map and instead of Antarctica around the end, it's just a continent down there. But the same thing would happen, right? You sure. would have a problem. You can't have the sun go in front of you and then around your back because it's coming from the north to east and taking off northwest. All these videos um, are completely cut up. And it, it this is the kind of thing I'm talking about because I was showing Flat Earth math, math the other night and he said, well, now if somebody went down there now and took these, you wouldn't trust them. You, and I said, yeah, you know why? Because it's too late. Because the Antarctica has been down there since you know creation, who knows? But we've had video camera footage or video camera capabilities for 50 plus years. Yeah, so yeah. where is the footage from the last 50 years of simply showing a shadow do a 360 degree turn. It's not even difficult to fake, but they didn't do it. Yeah. They to fake it, they cut this film up. They yeah. simply took half the day, took it out and said, "We'll just show this halfway going around flag." And it's now they're in trouble because when you go looking for these things, this is stuff you expect to find, especially because like I said, really the South Pole being um a 24 hour I'm sorry, having the 24 hour sun is kind of proof of the globe. If there was proof of the sun going around the continent, which it doesn't do. And, you know, I'm not sure yet how they're going about um, exactly how they go about keeping the light there for 24 hours. Yeah. But again, they're capable of anything. So if yeah. it's just a reflection, they can reflect the sun off the atmosphere. And so you have 24 hours of daylight, but nobody's paying attention to the fact of the one thing they can't fake is that big yellow ball in the sky that has to go around your back. Yeah, it's not happening. Watch this flag here, this green one down here at the uh, lower right. You'll see it start about, what is that, about 8 o'clock. Click 8 o'clock. It'll go all the way to about 2 o'clock. Click 8 o'clock, all the way to 2. Click, and right, and it's just obvious this could be what they're doing and why they're doing it. Again, this is during the month of December, meaning there is no excuse for not having a sun come in here. And this is at the South Pole. This isn't like we're looking at Mawson Station or something where you might say, well... The sun has to go further behind your back to get, no, 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 no. This is dead center, the South Pole, 90 degrees. There's absolutely no excuse for it. It's one of the best proofs that there is. Um, we can shove this down NASA's throat until somebody admits faking all this stuff. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. I agree. I agree. Wow. So, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and again, if it's not like it's just one video, people can go, I mean, I'm looking at a whole list here um you know go to any of these dates now again if you go to like april well then there's not supposed to be a 24-hour sun yeah. so you're going to see the sun come just like we said from the northeast but they still cut the film up because they don't want to show that well here we have full days and then the other you know so they cut all these up just so they 
have an excuse. But I mean, this is the kind of thing that you could show somebody who is arguing for the globe and and have them explain it. What could possibly be the reason for having no video footage or evidence of a 24 hour sun? Yeah. 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 Again, it reminds me of the uh, thing I have in my uh, flyer short list where that guy and I can't remember his name, but it's on there where, you know, the guy pretends to be a Hollywood producer. And he calls up NASA looking for some stock footage of the Earth rotating on its axis. And, you know, he's got him on speakerphone. And he calls up, you know, he, he knows who to call. He's talking to the trademark office. And he asks for it. And they say, uh, yeah, we don't have that. I was like, what are you talking about? You know, you're NASA. You guys have everything. And I'm Hollywood. And, you know, it's not like the guy didn't believe him. He sounded very convincing. I mean, who you know, people do it all the time. And he goes, yeah, we don't have that. And even today, they don't have anything any of any high quality. You know, they've got that those twenty frames where the the moon's transiting in front of it, but that you know nothing you could use in a movie, right? Uh, and I thought, wow. I mean, uh, I which is why I put it on the short list. I was going, wow, that guy did that with a cell phone in freaking five minutes. You know, I <laughs> and this kind of footage, the thing that bothers me about it is that you know people like Tiger Dan didn't have to do what he did because oh, Tiger Dan he just needed to review this and see that um it's not a continent it, it yeah. well could be the continent on the flat earth it's not a continent at the bottom of the globe um the sun does not go around the south pole during their summer and that's yeah. just and you know think about it guys if it did go around their south pole at summer do you think it would be freezing cold there do you think that the coldest part on earth would be at 90 degrees south it only makes sense because it's the outer edge it is the yeah. furthest that you can go it is the the least amount of sun you're ever going to get is right here where this camera is. It's at the 90 degree marker. And so yeah, yeah. it just really bothers me that um, there's still people out there, other channels, other shows that keep pushing this idea that uh, Antarctica must be a continent. It must be because people fly down there, people travel down there. Sure, um, sure. And, you know, and I get that. But at the same time, all you need to do is say, well, show me some evidence then that the sun goes around um, and there is none. And, I've looked and looked and, you know, there's that one video that was just made in 2015. The You've seen it. it's got a little picture of the watch on it and it's mm -hmm. like turning, you know, and the sun looks completely fabricated. It doesn't even look real. And again, it's 2015. So tell me, where's the video footage from 1950 through 2015? Why are these things like the second picture of Earth yeah. uh, showing up in 2015? Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. So. Hey, while you're while you're there, you want to share that uh, uh, NASA got sick of those NASA releasing those 10,000 photos. You still got that link lying around that I sent you? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me get that. Because I, I, I want to read that part. Uh, I'll read it on my side. So okay. Somebody sent me a thing, and there was this debunker guy uh, who who released, who wrote a thing for, what was it, lifecoachcode.com. And it's, his name is De, Dejan, D-E-J-A-N. And the title's called, NASA Got Sick of Those Conspiracy Theories About the Moon and Released Over 10,000 More Photos. And I was going, yeah, okay, fine. You know, NASA releases. They're just retouching and re resing you know, cleaning up, you know, a bunch right. of their old photos. Not, none of this stuff struck me. I mean, the fact that, that the Apollo 17 photo is in that list, it's like, really? That's new? The right. Apollo 17 photo just with no, with no star background. But I get to the very end, and I'm looking, I was going, yeah, yeah, all this is BS and crap, and, and some of these are worse than others. But I get to the end, and what I thought was interesting, when you scroll all the way down, to the end, there was this little paragraph, and I, I've got to read this real quick. Go ahead. And what struck me is really, it's like, wow, is this how far the debunkers are going to go? Because if you're going to go this far, you might as well quit. <laughs> uh, the people who went there, and he means the moon, right? The Americans, are right. real heroes. They stepped up for humanity to expand its frontiers, risking their lives in an unknown domain no one ever went. That's brave. We need to honor these people, no matter if some of the images were faked or not, because it's not important to step first. What is important is that we stepped, and then he goes on and says, the important thing is that we have to strive together. I'm going, are you out of your mind? I go, you'd never be able to pull that off in a debate. Yeah, just we should just accept it. Just, you know, they're heroes. Yeah, accept it. It's like, you know, the, the photos, yeah, the photo doesn't matter. And, and it's like, okay. It's like, wait, wait, that some of them were faked? Okay, then tell me which ones were faked, why they were faked, and where where do you go from there? You know, it's it's uh, it's ridiculous. I, I was amazed that he would actually write that. It's like, fine, fine, so what? And it's like, oh, really? Okay, here, I'll, I'll throw a funny thing out for you. Um, 
I'm going to have, I've got a friend who's really, really good in Photoshop. I'm going to have him Photoshop me in some compromising positions with George Clooney. Is that going to affect George <laughs> Clooney's next relationships? Probably. Or maybe it should. It's like, well, why? They're faked. You know, but why? Oh, it's just, Oh, it drives me insane that someone would actually say something like this. It's like, so what if they're faked? We still went to the moon. It's like, not if you faked some of it. it and if you fake some of it, you know, that means you probably faked all of it. Who, who took was, this picture here that I'm looking at? Which one? This oh, one. Yeah, that shot? That shot's ridiculous. Who took the picture? I don't know. Oh, boy. I don't know. And why would you take the picture? Yeah. You know, what, 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 what's, what's the benefit of – it's like their cameras – in all sorts of, and I appreciate the, the, the astronaut's grubby look. You know, some of the astronauts like dirty faces and, oh, yeah, here's that, the one where one guy's upside down and the other, yeah, because none of that can be faked. That, that shot yeah. right there, the car one, that's an interesting shot. And there's no video footage at all of them unfolding, which they would have needed to do because the car is way too big. And they, it basically was like folded up underneath the... Oh, yeah. And they underneath must, the limb uh, yeah and and there is yeah, one there is one grainy video of them unloading what they say is the car to the ground you know the, in the folded position but wouldn't you think these guys would be like have a badge of pride of putting that sucker together and why are you putting it together in the first place it's like is it really saving you that much time or yeah, is it I, some, just something cool that you want to build people for money and and you saw that like that picture of them, you know that all those wires, you know, I didn't realize that was, the thing was that complicated. The the it looks, I mean, there was a lot of things hooked up to it. Oh, this this picture here, I think Missa has found before that this picture is uh, doctored. Isn't this the one that you found, babe? It's well, yeah, but if it was re-released, it's probably been fixed. No, see how his, this space is here makes him look, makes him look thin. Yeah. Well, that's it's completely fake that you're supposed to have all this the original one has the original that. picture has his actual uh, astronaut uniform there or whatever you know whatever they're wearing um will they let you these bring up any bigger or anything open an image in new town i could have sworn by the way like like the one where the astronauts got a red helmet i was going wait why isn't that a russian shot <laughs> i don't think we we did a lot of things in red helmets we didn't like the color red back then Oh, this oh, better, better dead than red. That whole song and dance. Jeez, I know. Anyway, I yeah, I saw these. You know, this is just a smattering of them, but it was you know, there, there's nothing new here. When no. they say they released them, it's like fine. They 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 crank they cleaned them up, cranked up the res, and uh, you know, it's like it, besides, it's like none of them would be new. It's like because uh, what what why'd you wait so long? What were you waiting for? And if you were going to release them, why not release them on the 50th anniversary, which is coming up, you know, not that long away now. Yeah, what is it away? Uh, so uh, Apollo years? 11 would be three years. Yeah, they're going to make some announcements. They're going back. I mean, this picture here is ridiculous because you could take this with your... In fact, why don't you go back for the 50th year? Yeah, and you should have already been planning that. Yeah. Why, why not go back? Why not? I mean, especially since some of the astronauts are still alive. How many are left, though? Are what? they down to two? Is there only two left? Oh, no, there's got to be more than that. I'm thinking, uh, well, there's definitely Buzz and, and Collins. Well, yeah. I mean, we're talking about um, 8 through 17. Yeah, there's there's got to be. I think there's seven still alive. I'll have to check that after. because Yeah, I don't know either. I'm using some of these as thumbnails for stuff. Last year, right? Um, what's his name? The guy that, get out of my house. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, should we have him clip, Dad? Yeah, that whole thing. <laughs> Let's get him waxed. What? Yeah, get him waxed. <laughs> the, um, um, you know, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we got off on a tangent. Joe Rogan. Yeah. The, um, uh, the, the Joe Rogan, people who do things for money. The, um, the, the, and actually, the reason why I remember going back to that was Tiger Dan, because I was thinking if I ever get, did uh, uh, Joe Rogan's show, I would bring up Tiger Dan in that – uh, I mean, yeah, I know Tiger Dan was trying to redraw the map and supposedly went nuts, but that doesn't explain why he just didn't go back to his Christian prophecy show. And he, well, but here's why I'll tell you why, because I know that one. Well, um, it's because once you've said that the Bible says the earth is flat, then how could he go back if he's now said the earth is not flat? Or if he was thinking that, he kind of said, you know, he kind of put himself in a predicament because how do you now say oh well the bible is not telling the truth about that part he, he was just 
I think he's kind of stuck. Yeah, yeah I, I, I kind of believe that, but but I kept, you know, I've, I've, I've looked at his channel, you know, pretty much once a month ever since, you know, the, the whole unpleasantness went down. And he didn't take down any of the Flat Earth videos. No, he didn't. He, he, I hear he still comments. Well, I heard that too, but it's like we've never seen his face. We've never seen him make another video. He's never done an interview. He's never done anything. He's just, yeah, but I, I, I've I, heard, I've seen it. You're absolutely right. There's time and date stamps for him making comments, but they're really generic and they're not very positive. And, uh, are they anti flat earth or what are they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're still, they're still anti flat earth, but, the, but he still will not. And I've even, I even went on a Strange World episode and called him out. I said, look, coward, <laughs> let's finish this. You know, you, you started right. a 10 part series against flat earth. You made it to five. <laughs> you never finished it. You never I mean, the fi one thing I've, I've said, and I'll say it a million times is that if I ever uh, turn, and by the way, I'm going to say this publicly. So, so everybody hears me because there's been some recent events. I will never, ever, ever commit suicide. Okay. So oh. if you ever hear that it is wrong, it is somebody is lying to you because that just recently happened with, um, uh, Victor Sharp, and you know, I, I, according to a couple of his friends, they say no, he did commit suicide. This guy made shows, had radio shows, wrote blogs, wrote books, anti Clinton, uh, the Kill List. He talked about her offing people, yeah, and yeah. so to me, if he did commit suicide, I think he's a dirtbag because he basically left all of his fans out there doubting the story. But now his family, his whole entire family and his friends are all coming out and saying, no, he actually did commit. It's like he didn't write his fans any kind of a blog post. He didn't say, hey, don't go looking after Clinton, thinking that she killed him. The guy wrote like uh, 12 books on Clinton being a murderer. And then right before she gets elected president, he commits suicide. He was completely healthy, hmm. like 44 years old. He, um, he even jogged every day. I mean, he had no problems and he went up to the top of a mountain and shot himself in the head. And, you know, first thing I'm doing is looking into it like, oh, here comes another one added to the Clinton list. Well, uh -huh. then his brother comes out and his family and they all say, and his son saying, no, he actually did commit suicide. Uh -huh. And uh, I just wanted to put that out there that, yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I never you. commit suicide. So if you ever hear that, um, it didn't happen. Gotcha. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah. yeah it, it's definitely going to be, we'll talk about it more, I'm sure. Uh, the, um, uh, it's going to be a weird end to this year. Uh, it's gonna be weird. I mean, it's getting weirder and weirder every time I see it. It's like, it's like really, you know, Hillary back, you know, fainting, almost fainting during a, like a 9-11 thing. It's like, really, isn't there enough drugs in the world that could keep you upright? Seriously? And why are you still running? If Yeah, I, that's the thing. You'd think she would at least hand it off. Or... Uh, look, if you're going to die, what, why <laughs> why make it, you know, you're not going to, you're going to have a rough night on inaugurate, you know, during, you know, the... The, well, every night as president, I'm pretty sure it's probably not the best position for somebody who's uh, fainting while just no, no public speaking. That's pretty much what you do. Yeah. Um, it, anyway, sorry. So real quick though, the the Joe yeah. Rogan thing. The reason why I, I had to talk about it was is that he seems to be getting more and more. I don't know if he's doing it deliberately because he knows that he missed his chance. You know that he he took the 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 bribe too early, and what I mean that for people who don't know who Joe Rogan is, he is the only, as far as I know, the only. And I will give Eric DeBay credit for this because he was the one that that made I think the best video on it called the uh, the Joe Rogan mystery, which was a compilation of, of different things because Joe Rogan used to come. He was a conspiracy guy who used to go out against NASA, and he absolutely did not believe that NASA, you know, the United States went to the moon. And that, you know, we, we didn't go anywhere. And he was really, you know, how enthusiastic he gets. He, he's, he gets really charged up. And he oh, was yeah. winning. He was winning debates. He was browbeating people into the ground. And somebody took notice of that. And they went to him and they said, you know what? Here's what we want you to do. <laughs> and you know when he, it was? And I, I can tell you when it was. It was right after his Neil deGrasse interview. Because he was saying recently in his conversation with his buddy, they were doing a fight, uh, what did they call like a fight uh, roundup or whatever it's called, yeah. um, fight roundtable. Yeah. And uh, during that, they were talking about the earth being flat, possibly uh, Mars not being real. His buddy was flat out saying, I don't think there's anything on Mars. You know, I don't think they did that stuff. And he was bringing up the movie The Principal. And at a certain point, Joe Rogan kind of taps his headphones and says, I can hear them emailing me right now. They're telling me this is a disrespectful conversation. And we need to knock it off that we don't know about what we're talking about. And I think those words sound to me like something somebody said to him about the way that he treated 
Neil deGrasse during his interview because it, everybody needs to watch that because you need to watch how how much conviction Joe Rogan had to not let Neil get away with shitty answers. Yeah. Neil's trying to explain things like, oh, well, you know, they're doing this. And one part, one part, an astronaut walks by the flag on the moon and the flag waves. Yeah. And Neil says, well, maybe his arm hit it. And Joe says, he's 25 feet from the flag. He's like, well, we don't, we can't see that from this angle. It could be that he just touched it or he kicked up a piece of dust and it hit the flag. He said, but Joe Rogan doesn't stand for that shit. He kind of goes right after him and says, yeah. no, no, no. This is why it's so juicy. This is why you're feeling the conspiracy theorists. Well, something happened after that show where somebody told him you're Back disrespecting. Off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they offered him and, and yeah, he drops off the map for a little while. He goes dark. For a little while and then he comes back and he's given a show a one season deal on sci-fi network called joe rogan questions everything and the very first episode he recants everything he ever said negatively about nasa and yeah. then they then it got worse from there you know he interviewed chris hatfield he interviewed you know then he got then he gets oh, uh, brian cox brian cox then he gets neil degrasse tyson and yep. he's kissing his ass and his friends you know a, a couple of them and he was tra you know shutting them down with his eyes his friends were going like dude didn't you like weren't you against the moon i remember that and he was like you know he's just trailing off and that's why he's in trouble because you can't go if you're going to, you can be on the fence and get away with certain things, but you can't be an activist for one thing and turn around and be an activist for some, for, for the, the very thing you're going after. Nobody gets to, to, to get away with that. And he did that. And he still, to this day, will not tell you why. And that was, that's the big, big question. It's like, what happened? Fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, fine. You believe in NASA now? You believe in, in the Apollo program? Fine. I get that. Tell me why. Tell me why you believe in it. And he right. will not, he will not, because there's nothing you can answer. There's no one thing that, I mean, even if he was shown some exclusive footage, no, you know, of the astronauts on the moon dealing with aliens, right? Right. And you're saying because you believe that, you would believe that was real and that would negate all the other bad stuff that NASA's ever put out, all that terrible production value? He, he won't do it. And I think that's part of the reason why he's, he's really, this flat earth thing's messing with his head because he can't bring it up without, you know, he's bringing it up, but he's bringing it up and he's either very, very clever for what he's doing about this, where he's, he's bringing it up, but he's saying, I hate it. It's dumb. And he's giving more ammunition to the flat earth by doing it. Or he legitimately does not know that, that he's helping us. In, it, in it seems to me like he has basically, um, so at some point he, he changed his tune to the whole idea of, people smarter than us know these answers. Yeah. And that's basically how he addresses all these situations now, as far as astronomy, whether or not we're on Mars, he just goes back and forth to, with his, and I'll show a little clip of this uh, video where he's talking to his buddy. His buddy is now at this point, probably as close as you can get to being a flat earther. He yeah. no longer believes in anything space related. He talks about it here. You know, he's trying to explain to him about the principle, the movie. No, this and, isn't, this isn't Max, is it? No, this is um. What is his buddy's name? I can't remember his name. Off. Uh, Cause Eddie Bravo. Oh, okay, cool. You know, because his friend and he because they brought it up. To, I think he's brought this up to his friend. The fighter, right? Well, no, no, the pool player. Oh, the pool player. No, the, one know. of the be one of the best pool players in the world, and a, a good friend of his named Max Eberle, E B E R I L E or something like that. Um, you can find it. And Joe Rogan's got a vi several videos with him and Max, and he and he he's met, brought it up in the show where he's going. You know who believes in this is Max. And people are going, oh, Max, you know, like, like Max believes in all sorts of stuff. Right. And it drives him nuts because he can't convince Max otherwise. No, and I think it may be the last time he's going to have Eddie Bravo on his show either because Eddie Bravo here, um, and he even tells him towards the end, and maybe I'll get that part, he says to him, Eddie, don't you think you need to make sure you know about this shit before you bring it up on the air? Like he's uh, pretty pissed at him because – this guy's going off about, dude, astronomers don't know anything. They don't uh, know. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can pop in real quick and see where we're at. Uh, nice. I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Right, this. Use, and who knows whether it's uh, just a post-fight test like they – That could be anything. Yeah, yeah they indicate tunnel. that – 2006. It's not a conspiracy theory. This is a science documentary that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a conspiracy theory documentary. It's a science doc. They're up. Michio Kaku was okay, talking about this. What's it called again? The principle. Okay. The I'll principle. Try it. I remember this. Copernicus principle. What they found. This is what they found in in the first reading, and they thought there must be a mistake. 
it's crazy. They're constantly updating what they know to be true. So it's not like something that's rigid. Like, but astronomy know. is one of those things. It's like they'll, they'll, they'll release. See, every time they find out something new, every time they find out something new about a planet, like it's important to release that information. It's not like they have like a strict narrative that they have to hold on to. So if someone comes around and says, it turns out that our measurement was inaccurate and the moon is, you know, X amount of miles further and weighs X amount of tons less than we thought it did or more. You know I don't what, think that would be a bad thing for science, right? That would I be just know. a new discovery with better equipment. The new people, but the new discovery is... Like, well, go ahead. A lot of people interviewed, on the, according to the Wikipedia for this documentary, claimed that they weren't told what they were being interviewed for. And Michio Kaku said that this was likely clever editing. And that That's his bullshit. statements bordered on... That's the bullshit. <laughs> George Ellis has said that I was interviewed for it, but... The, the sun's going around. Oh, we're going around the sun. And, and then there was a third one where we're the center. The sun's going around us, but the planets are going around the sun. There was three models, and they were all based on observations, like dudes just looking at lights. They're Whoa. looking at lights trying to figure out, okay, are we going around the sun, or is the sun going around us? You know, and um, even like at Einstein's times, he has a quote saying that we don't have the technology to even f uh, prove that the earth is even spinning. They can't even, they're still a debater. Are we even moving? Are we still? Do we have to move? Because apparently the moon doesn't spin. It, it's still, why wouldn't, why is it so hard to believe that we're still? Because they haven't even proved, even at, since Einstein, I don't know, maybe they did what prove it. What if the earth is the center of the universe and we stand still and the universe spins around <laughs> us 24 hours a day? <laughs> Wouldn't that Could be you nuts? Imagine? Wouldn't that be nuts? I think they're measuring that though, and I think and that's what they're saying. I the cosmic. They, I feel them emailing me right now and telling me to go fuck myself. <laughs> and that this is a disrespectful conversation. That could be totally bullshit. That could be totally bullshit. Well, we need but to that's get Neil deGrasse Tyson that's what the scientists on with are Eddie Bravo. Yeah, that's what they're saying. <laughs> Neil, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Tyson will never go on with Eddie Bravo. No. But why does it even have to be a conspiracy? Like, if you just look at what what is absolute about space, forget about all the measurements. Like just forget I said, about all the numbers because we don't. I don't know, and you don't know. I don't know. Just forget about that. Just, just like what they're figuring out right now about Mars. I mean, that they're sending back these images from these rovers, and these scientists are debating what this is, what that is, if this is actual running water at one point in time, if this is some sort of a strange. All that for sure is really happening. A hundred. I think that's all bullshit. You don't think they're really on Mars? I think they're faking everything. <laughs> I think they're faking everything. <laughs> I think all that's fake. You don't think they, they landed on Mars with a rover? I think it's all fake. How come? It's just too hard. It's too hard to do? They got to, you know what? They've lied so much. NASA's lied so goddamn much that I don't believe shit I, they see, I, I love Eddie I Bravo. Let me just say that. Uh, yeah, oh, Eddie yeah, yeah, Bravo yeah, Eddie Bravo actually, Bravo, actually may be a closet, a closet flat earther at this point. point. Well, I think he is. And I, I just, anybody who's willing to stand up uh, in that predicament, in that situation, and not give an F that his friend is laughing at him the other guy's laughing at him um and he's just holding on to his conviction saying i don't think it's true and yeah, that's yeah. what uh, has gotten away from a lot of people is their ability to um do that to not care about what others think about you because i know mark you had to to put yourself into that situation um it's something that i even cared about before you made your videos and my wife oh, and yeah, i were yeah. talking and yeah. she was saying do a video and i said i can't i said i'm i people will eat it up people will just hate on me so much that it's not worth me doing it. And it wasn't until I saw you make it. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And if people, I said, I, I remember telling Missa that if everyone gives us a hard time and, and it gets disproved, I'm just going to say that I did it because Mark told me. To. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. That's awesome. Well, awesome. Well, again, it's too, uh, and you, you know this as well as anybody. I mean, it's too big not to stand by your convictions. It's so big that, it eclipses, no play on words there, it eclipses the other person's ignorance. You know right. what I mean? It, you look at them and you're going, hey, you don't have to believe, you don't You don't want to. But if you do the research, because you've, we've seen it too many times. I mean, we've got yep. a higher retention rate for flat earth than just right. about anything. anything out there. It's 99.9999%. You know, right. if, if, if there was even a 10% drop off, we would catch way more hell. Than and that's the, that's the greatest thing about it is knowing that every day, you know, there's more flat earthers than there was the day before. Yeah. And that's yeah. A, a great feeling to, to have. And, you know, I'll admit that when I made my first video, 
I was probably 50, 50, you know, I had done enough research to know something wasn't right. And I said, by making these videos, one of two things is going to happen. Either a, I'm going to prove that they are lying and that we've been deceived for 50 years yeah. or 100, 500 years. Or the second thing was going to happen is I was going to get proven to me that we did live on a ball and I was willing to um, accept either one of those. I just wanted to know the truth. Now, as yeah. soon as you start making your first couple and you see what people are coming back with, and then of course, just more and more research. And then it becomes, you know, there, there's no longer a question in my mind, at least, if um, if the globe model is correct. The globe model is a model. It's a model based on words and mathematics, um, certainly not anything reality. And, you know, is the earth flat like the Gleason's map? I don't know, you know, I, I don't know, but I know that by, uh, by putting the doubt in people's minds about NASA and allowing them to see that NASA is complete horseshit, from there, then we'll have a whole world of people dying to find out the truth, and then it will come out. Oh, you yeah. know, so I don't worry a lot about the map. I know a lot of people are real big on the map, and what's the flat Earth map, and what's the flat Earth? I really don't care because I'm more interested in outing the people who have been lying to us for 500 years. And then from there, of course, what's the first thing going to be on everybody's mind when you prove NASA's full of shit? Well, where do we live? And then you've got these big corporations and companies with money who can find this stuff out. Um, for now, if people are, you know, and I know Bob and Cammy are doing a great job on their map. Um, yeah. I'm not really in, involved in that so much just because um, they got it. And I just feel like the map, even if we did get the map, well, somebody's just going to have problems with that anyway. So it's, yeah. I'm more about yeah, someone's going to tear down the map no matter what. Right. But, but I mean, how many times have we seen, though, this is the part that I love so much. And because, you know, I've been dealing with this since, since last year, and you, you saw this, where some of the, the bigger debunker guys, which is weird because a lot of these guys were conspiracy guys. They weren't even debunking websites. They were guys that were conspiracy guys that decided they were going to debunk flat earth. Right. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, I believe in everything else, but I don't believe in flat earth. And they would make videos, you know, and, you know, how many times we see it, you know, case closed, RIP, game over. Uh, you know, debunked forever, you know, go home, all this stuff. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, didn't do anything. It no. did nothing. In fact, all it did, uh, and I encourage debunkers, the ones that still remain out there. Uh, and heck, even what was it? Uh, True Theory 3. That He came back out and made another one. Just Did he came, really? I didn't know that. I got to hear just that. came out uh, like yesterday, the day before and made another flat earth video, uh, you know, anti flat earth video. And it's like, look, well, all you're, you're right. doing is you're shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. You think you're doing something, but you're just making the bonfire bigger. That's all that's you're doing. Saying, that's what I'm saying about these conversations I'm having with globe believers is they think that they are making strides to get rid of flat earth. But what they're really doing is showing the cognitive dissonance that, that they have. And they're yeah, showing yeah. that when you question them on these things, and how do you know the, the distance of the sun? Oh, well, we measured it when there was, uh, the, you know, there was Venus had the, um, yeah. The cult to the sun, you know, you're like, okay, so then from there, when did this take place? Oh, 1700s. Okay, so didn't two people have to be on different sides of the earth? Yes. Okay, so that takes, that's a six month journey, number one. Yeah. Number two, you have somebody, they have to have the exact time, which, how are we keeping time at that time? How are we keeping, you know, we don't have the tools to do what everybody's saying that they yeah. did. And it's just obvious. It's, it's when you start pushing on these things, they show that their only answer is to, to say, well, science says. Yeah, yeah, and the, that is a that's a fallacy right there. I mean, right? It's a, it's something you can't even use in a debate when you appeal to authority, and that is all they have. Yeah, you're that's absolutely it. right. And and they come back with, um, you know, I've gotten the argument. I'm sure you have too, where they've said, "Well, are you saying that you're smarter than than all these guys with PhDs and and you know all these astrophysicists and astronomers?" I'm going, I'm going. I don't have to be smarter because if the foundation, because all their work. It's like, fine, they're smart guys. If you spent your entire life, you know, working on Saturn or a specific moon on Saturn, you know this is actually true. There's people that dedicate their entire right. lives to the moons <laughs> of Saturn. If everything that all your work was based off of, you know, of, of somebody else's work who was based off of somebody else's work, but eventually you work backwards and backwards until you get to the foundation. If the foundation is bad, then everything else is tainted. Right. Everything else becomes worthless. And it's like, look, I'm, I'm not picking on... I feel bad for the astrophysicist. There was a, a pastor, I think I mentioned in this email guy, um, uh, Kizzle, Dr. Jason something. He's a, he's a pastor that's also got a PhD in astrophysics. How that works out, I have no idea. <laughs> it's, 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 there's, there's a weird dichotomy right there. 
<laughs> and <laughs> and he and it's like, look, if you're an astrophysicist, you're in real trouble because you don't have, you know, once once this how this comes out, you everything you've done, you know, are you saying that all his schooling was for nothing? I'm going, unfortunately, yes. All yeah. your schooling. If you, I, I was not kidding when I said in the clues, I said. If Flat Earth is announced in the New York Times tomorrow, I know I'm dating myself by mentioning a newspaper. <laughs> if, if it's announced tomorrow, every astrophysics department and every astronomy department in every university, everywhere, they don't go to work the next day because it doesn't, it's, it's not there. Now, we're, we're not talking about a lot of people. You know, we're only talking about thousands, not millions. But, but those people are gone. I mean, that shuts down. That means anyone who is an astrophysicist or has their, again, you got to feel bad for like that, any. Does that tell you though, and this is something I, my wife and I have discussed and we have differing opinions on it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that tell you though, that maybe it, um, I don't want to say it isn't possible that it comes out, but that they will do everything possible, um, including your worst imaginable thing before they let it come out. And I, I say that because when you're talking about a, uh, an organization like NASA that has all of its subsidiaries, you know, it's got um, its place in Alabama, it's got JPL, it's got all these different uh, offshoots. And to me, it just seems like it isn't possible for it to be admitted um, that it's all been faked. I mean, I just... You're, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. There's only one way. If you want to make it to where it doesn't turn ugly. And I mean, ugly <laughs> to where, you know, people aren't storming right. the gates of NASA. There's only one thing you can do. And that is you defer the blame to someone else. It's the oldest trick in the book. Well, not yeah. the oldest trick. And you know who they're going to blame? Well, take, take your pick. You know, probably, you, extra, probably extraterrestrials. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You, you're going to yeah. say they were under duress and everyone would buy it. Right. Everyone would buy it. It's like, it's like, look, you know, or, or whoever, whoever they are. It's like, these guys told us. Not right. to tell you. And it's like, oh, okay. I mean, heck, I'd forgive them for, right. you know, because I, it's like, cause I don't have a leg to stand on at that point. I was like, oh, what, well, what, would, what would I do? I was actually telling my wife that too. I said, you know, we should make a statement and as much as I'm against NASA and everything else, but I almost feel like it would be beneficial to say something to the effect of all things will be forgiven. Nobody needs to be arrested. Nobody needs to go to jail over it. It's just admit the truth and let's move forward. Like, there you go. Yeah, you know, and, yeah. I, and that's in all honesty. I don't care. I don't care about putting anybody behind bars. Um, I'm sure whoever did this was told by somebody else to do it. Um, you know, I don't think Buzz Aldrin's idea was, hey, I want to fake a moon landing. I'm, you know, p fairly positive that whoever was in charge at that time is probably dead. Yeah. You know, so it just seems like, um, and, and they're yeah, not yeah. going to believe us anyway, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you no, know, it's, you're absolutely yeah. right. I mean, it's, a, it's a pass. It's a free pass. It's, it stops the greatest class action lawsuit in the history of our civilization, right? Where these massive military contractors go after NASA and say, look, you know, you guys for all for nothing. I mean, if, if all you have to do is say, oh yeah, the, 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 the guys in the spaceship did it. You know, they were the ones that, that put us under duress. Then uh, wh whoever the president is, I don't want to get into that right this second. Uh, <laughs> whoever the president is comes out and says, you know, presidential pardon to NASA, you know, for, you know, so there will be no class action suit. And then that's it. I mean, then, yeah, you're right. We move on from there and the damage is minimal if you go that road. It just seems like at that point too, well, th then they would have to reveal whatever the truth is. Yes. Wait. Oh, yeah. At that point you have to. Because right. otherwise so people aren't going to buy it. You, you have to produce, you've got to produce a spaceship. You've got to, I hate to use right. the, a biblical term, you've got to show signs and wonders at that <laughs> point because you don't, you know, no, no. one's, no one's going to buy it without it. You, and everyone's got to be able to see it. It's got to be filmable. It's got to be, you know, right. mainstream media. Oh, yeah. Now, I heard you say something on your show this week um, that you either have a feeling that something's happening at the end of this year or you think that maybe something's going to happen. And the reason I bring that up is, again, in my conversation with my wife, the way that NASA is acting and the way they keep putting out this bullshit and they don't seem to be caring at all that it's going on, it, it tends to make me think, and I'm not a doom and gloom kind of guy, but it just yeah, makes yeah. me think that possibly they are planning something uh, to, to kind of make something else happen, that this becomes back burner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The plot line uh, warrants it. 
at this point. Right. You've got to get the storyline going. I mean, we're just smoldering here. We've we've been smoldering all year long, and and we've been waiting. Yeah, of course, there have been a couple little events here and there, but you couldn't ask for a more perfect timing. If if you were gonna if you're gonna do this, I mean, we all know this. I mean, Americans especially, we watch. I don't know if you're like me. I've watched a lot of movies in my time, and there's certain moments where you're expecting it. You know, expecting right. something. It's like I don't care what happens in the next ten minutes, but something better freaking happen in the next ten minutes, or you know, I'm gonna go get more popcorn. Uh, and that's what that's where we, we seem to go. I mean, part of it seems to be tied to the election. Uh, we can, we can get into this now if you want. Sure. Um, I don't know what is is going on with the election, but I still firmly believe that the only reason you would produce two candidates that are unappetizing to both parties, as bad as this is, I mean, you really the the jilted wife of an ex president or or a aging reality television star. Those are your two choices. Um, would prompt you to say, well, heck, if we if we those are our choices, we might as well stay with Obama. But of course, right. you can't stay with Obama because you're only allowed to run two terms unless mm-hmm. something weird happens. If something weird happens, the president does have a little known clause that he can he can activate that says, you know, that in a time of crisis, whether it be domestic or international, that he can stay on and suspend elections until such time to where we have elections and people and, who think they hear that and they say, no, it's not possible. You can't do it. Just, you know, look up FDR. Oh, FDR. Absolutely. F- FDR, um, Ooh, Franklin Delano right. Roosevelt stayed in world war two because world war two was so stressful. They said, the last thing we need is elections. Let's just keep them on for a third term. And that's exactly what they four. did. The what? I think he did four terms. Did, well, I don't think he finished four terms. Oh, he! I think he died through his fourth term because he was he was part of the rebuilding project. How long? Where does it say? I'm trying to find here. Um, has served as 32nd president from 33 to 45. So 12 years. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, so four terms. He won a record four presidential elections. Dominated his party after 32. Did he make so it? So for, I did. Uh, I don't think he made it to the end of his fourth term. But he was close, so that's great. Well, anyway, the point is is that, yes, presidents can do that. Now, in this case, he didn't have to do it. The, the, everyone else did it for him. Mm-hmm. He said, look, we, you know, he's a good president. Let's keep him in there. Um, but he um, it was interesting because was 33 during those years. That was the you know, Depression years. And he, yeah. he stayed through. It's not like he was president when the war broke out. And, you know, he was, you know, talk about lucky. Yeah. So anyway, he, the, the point is, is that Obama can do that if he, he wanted yeah. to. He can enact it and say, like, let's say there's a massive terrorist attack in, uh, you know, the eastern seaboard somewhere that disrupts a whole bunch of stuff. He could do it then. Or if it's a multi-staged attack all over the world. You know, mm-hmm. like, you know, you could you could do that. Or uh, let's say there's some weird celestial event in the sky. You know, right. there's all sorts of reasons he could do it. And the, where, where am I going with this? Where I'm going with this is, is that <laughs> the two other candidates are, seriously, you, we've never seen an election like this in, in American history where the two candidates are so abrasive on both sides i mean yeah the democrats sort of like hillary but they're not it's there's they're not thrilled and trump on the republican side is like well we got trump but they don't i mean it's so everything that she's done she should be indicted and sure it's just ridiculous trump trump 20 years ago would have been an interesting choice you know back when he was when he was relevant i just think if you know if you know the system that we're under it, it it obviously isn't somebody um, that they can control. So, yeah. and if he did get into office, then I would change my mind about that and say, "Oh, now he obviously he is somebody who they can control. exactly someone they can control." But, but the, the the point is is that what you do is if you want because remember that you don't leave anything to chance. What you don't want is two really really good candidates so that if Obama enacts his third his, his third term, people go, "Yeah, but we really like this guy, John Doe. He was really an up and comer. I think he would have been great." Because now people would say, well, you know what? He was with us for eight years. He's still probably better than these two clowns. So right. let's, they won't be upset with it. They will have no, no one will object and, and, no. say, and say, well, we shouldn't keep Obama because we think Trump would be a better president or Hillary would be a better president. No one's going to say and that. And that's the narrative that they're playing is that, you know, Trump's the racist, um, you know, 
Clinton should be in jail or dying or dying. And one of those two playing that. And I still think they'll have something else come out. Yeah, now, yeah. now they're saying that to piss off the Republicans. Now Trump came out and said Obama was born in the United States. So yeah, yeah. oh yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, even though yeah, there so, was Trump, there's was there's Trump some irony for six years. Yeah. Oh yeah. I there, there's some irony there because I think tr the only reason Trump was allowed to be, get this far was because of the birther thing. I think <laughs> that he he came in and said, you know, he was pushing it really hard. People don't forget that the whole birth certificate thing. Trump oh, was yeah. the big champion behind that. And I but think they went to him. <laughs> the what? The tweets he made. I mean, he's absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. He he went to him. I think they went to him and they said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. How would you like to be the front runner for the Republican Party in the next election? And then and it's and then they say the same thing that they kind of told Joe Rogan. It's like, look, we'll give you one season of the Sci-Fi Network. After that, you've got to get your own ratings. I think they said the, said the same thing to Trump, which was, look, we're going to make you the front runner, there, but in, and but you've still got to win the freaking election, and we're not going to guarantee that you're going to win the election. We're just going to get right. you, you know, that close. But you got to drop the whole birther thing right now. And the loose end with the whole um, record keeper, yeah, we'll take care of that. Don't worry. And right. then, and that's and that's what happened. And now, yeah, and because why? Why? I mean, you've only got two months left in in Obama's presidency, supposedly, and now you're going to make Trump, you know, say publicly that, oh yeah, by the way, he, he was born in the United States. I was right. totally wrong. Yeah, I mean, and it would piss off any Republican that likes Trump is going to be like, well, yeah, we like him and he, he hates Obama and we hate Obama and Obama wasn't born here. And for him to say that, now you've just turned everybody that's a Republican against him by saying, oh, boy, now you're selling out. Yeah. Now you're just saying things. Yep. Yep. And he, yeah, yeah, they're, they're dismantling. They're sabotaging both of the candidates and making them look both terrible. Yep. And then how about for them not to have a debate? Have you ever even... What, how is that happening? You're absolutely right. Yeah, Why? it's so ridiculous. It's it's the middle of September. It shouldn't be allowed. Well, they we both haven't had a debate. It. The first one's what on Thursday? I don't think. I thought they declined it. It wouldn't surprise me. How how are we getting to the? There's no. We should have had head to head competition at this point. Again, I not that I believe in the it, in the which shouldn't be allowed. The what? I said I think they both declined it. But maybe I'm wrong. So let me. I've look. heard that, that there was actually one that was going to happen on Thursday, but I heard it's going to be different. That it's not going to be what you think. They're not going to be even allowed to interrupt each other. They're just going to sit up there and make statements. They're going to, you know, one person's going to read a statement, the other person's going to read a statement or do whatever, but no one's going to be like oh, interjecting. I'm going, why? I'm why crazy. wouldn't anyone be? I mean, isn't that what Trump does? Isn't that, you know, isn't that what he's known to do? I just oh, you're right. I take it back. I'm wrong. Uh, is, it, is it Thursday? Um, let me see here. Monday, September 26th, 9 to 1030 Eastern without commercial breaks. Who's moderating? Uh, oh, it's not until the 26th? That's in, in the, yeah, unless I'm reading this wrong. I just That's a week from Business Insider. Uh, now? No, Monday. So a week from Monday, week from tomorrow, week from tomorrow. Yeah. Again, it's not that it matters anyway, because, okay. So if you want the timeline, if you want me to make any, so I hate making predictions, but, <laughs> but yeah, we've got, there's basically it's this six week window to do something weird. That's, that's between now and when the election comes up. Cause we're really talking about six weeks. Cause then we got October, we'll get the rest of this month. We got October. And then the beginning of, of November is, um, the election you've got to do it before then you can't you know whatever is going to happen you gotta you've got to make your move and uh, it's either that or the unthinkable happens which is one of those two candidates actually becomes president both are completely groundbreaking one wasn't even a politician and the other one is a president's wife yeah <laughs> uh, it's, it's, we're, we're in such you know uncharted territory with either of those options uh, and all you need to do is read the Kenneth star report to see the kind of activity that was going on at the white house during that time anyway that even a thought of and now we'll just bring his wife in I mean, it makes yeah. no sense yeah yeah i guess uh, yeah, they say there's going to be the debate and uh, i guess there'll be six topics 15 minutes each and then they'll fill up the rest of the uh, each candidate will have two minutes to respond and then yeah. the moderator will give them follow-up questions so you're right it won't be like between each other well that's just it though when why when, it's, it's like yeah fine you can lay down those rules nobody's ever stuck to those rules before but the way they the way they uh are, are framing it it's like they're that's absolutely what they're gonna do 
like like the, apparently that Hillary has really no chance in debating against Trump because Trump's just a oh he would yeah he would kill he'd her. just destroy her you know because he's just an abrasive guy and you know she he would just over overrun her and or you know it could be a male female thing I don't know exactly hey um Let me see I did not I thought that they, I'd heard that they both were because I know Trump had a problem with it being on certain dates and certain times and said it's going to be unfair if there's a moderator he tried to do it without a moderator and then I thought the last thing I looked was that they he had just called it and said he wasn't going to be in him. But uh, I guess this, according to this, even though he's still complaining and saying that it's running up against Monday Night Football and other things like that. It's, oh, it's right. Like hey, that. By, by the way, have you seen any stats on this lately? I mean, it's, I haven't seen, you know, by, by this time, you you every news organization, every mainstream media organization knows how to take polls, right? So why haven't we been seeing a lot of Hillary ahead by 10 or Trump, you know, closing in or, you know, shouldn't there be I, canvas polling everywhere? I've heard a couple things, but I mean, also, I think people are catching on to what a poll is. And, you know, I don't care what 100 people said. So, I mean, yeah. but you're right. I did see a couple times that it just said it was even. And exactly. I, well, yeah, somebody told me that. The, well, I, I was I was I had a family member say that, oh, you know, because my family's staunch Republicans, even though I've never voted in my life. And they said uh, they said, oh, Trump's down by like 10 points. He's, you know, and I said, you wait. I go that if we get to the night before the election, it will be dead even and no one will be able to call it i mean oh sure there'll be people that are calling it but no one will be able to you know say one way or the other because that's how the system works it's and that good. could be another thing is that we go through the election everybody votes and then they find some sort of corruption and then obama has to step in and say nope hold on I'm if you want to delay, delay it sure sure right. or you know and i've thought of a bunch of different options down these lines too like let's say you know whether real or not hillary's health gets to the point and then she dies well, if she dies right after the election, the VP becomes president, the guy that nobody knows. Even I've yeah. forgotten his name already. Um, so you can't let her actually get elected if something's going to happen to her. Um, you could do a weird event during the debate where, you know, you have some sort of weird violent act where both of them are taken out. Then then you'd have a problem. Even though it would be a, a, a fairly domestic problem, you don't have enough time to bring in other candidates. And then Obama can step in and do that, even if it was something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. It's kind anyway, of let's. But no, get back to just real quick. Did, yeah. Is there something by the end of the year that you've heard, or uh, I remember you saying something about the last Christmas was two thousand. Oh, oh, oh! That wasn't me though. That was um, somebody who wrote in. Queen of yeah, somebody wrote in. Oh, thank you for listening to that. By the way, the um, the the Queen wrote uh, the Queen. I think the, said, the Pope and the Queen have both. Have both, have both hinted that last year was going to be the last holidays, the last Christmas. And yeah. I thought, wow, I go, you know, and I don't, and you can look this up online. You know, there's videos, there's YouTube videos dedicated to this. You can type in Queen says last Christmas, 2015, something like that. Yeah. I tried looking for it, I, it. Well, I saw people, you know, people making videos about it, but I could never find the actually, original, the original well, quote. Either one of them making the statement, but I didn't look for longer than, I, yeah, it's hard to say. It, to ask you. <laughs> it was well. No, it was very, very interesting, and it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it goes along with some of the other stuff we've already heard. You know, like this is the last pope. If you believe in the whole line of popes prophecy, that right. this is the last pope. Queen saying, "Well, his last Christmas, you know, it could be a, a shot to the peasants." You don't know. It's like enjoy your Christmas because it'll be the last one. You don't. It. it I, it's wouldn't surprise me though. Again, it's an election year. You know, we, we've already done, you know, we already know that, that things happen on election years. You know, eight years ago was when right. the, uh, the, the, year. the what? They call it the Shemitah. Right. Right. The, that dollar vigilante and a couple other people are saying things about, uh, it's the, uh, seven year cycle or eight year cycle. Whatever. There you go. There you yeah. go. I mean, it's, it's got all the earmarks for it. I know that. I mean, I, I'm not going to go so far on, on a ledge and say that you've got to make your, you know, what, whatever the event is going to be, it's got to be big. And I don't think it can even be domestic, to be quite honest. Um, you, you've got to make it bigger than 9-11 because 9-11, we've, we've seen it. I hate to say it, but it's old hat now. We've relived that thing so many times that uh, it's got to be something jar. Basically, I'm saying another 9-11 event isn't going to jar that many people by comparison. Uh, so yeah, if it was me, I would say I would go for some sort of celestial event. 
something because the social network, the, the big thing here, the big difference between now, between now and 9-11, you know, could have been a practice run in this. Yeah, the internet was up in 9-11, but we didn't have nearly the, the connectivity that we do now. Uh, social media has, has basically peaked. I don't think it's going to get any better. You know, it's not going to get any faster, that's for sure. Uh, everyone's got their phones. We can basically broadcast a story, steal a line from um, JFK when Donald Southern, Sutherland was doing that whole deep throat thing. You got to get the story out quickly, and you got to make sure everyone gets the same story. And that's what social media has done. We can basically tell the same story to everybody over all countries in what less than an hour, less than thirty minutes, if people are paying attention. And they'll believe it. I mean, there's and they'll believe it. Why wouldn't they believe it? It's on their phone. They're just going to look down. They're going to go, you know. And what an ability that is once you have that ability. Because I mean, it's just like the I was having the debate with the guy the other night, and we. And I brought up the movie Vaxxed and uh, was talking about that. And immediately he said, no, 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 no. The guy who made that movie has been discredited. And I'm like, no shit. Yeah. Like, you know, you think that because the company that made the vaccine is never going to just go away. It's not like they're going to say, oh, you caught us. We did actually uh, try and screw with your kids. So now we're going to leave. No, they're going to, they have enough money where it's easy to just discredit the the author of the movie. I mean, so, and that's how easy it is. Because once you put out that article in every news um, media source that there is. Well, that's what the world believes. You're, you're absolutely right. There's a line from, uh, and I, you don't mean movie quotes. Uh, there's a line from Vanilla Sky where you know where Tom Cruise said nine out of every ten problems in this world are tied to money. People forget that even the cigarettes, even out, you know, the the whole warning level, the lawsuit against the cigarette companies wasn't brought on by the people. It was brought on by the ins- the health insurance companies that were losing their freaking shirts from all the people that were dying of lung cancer. They were the ones that stepped forward and says, okay, I think all those earlier studies about cigarettes being good for you, I don't think those are really good. Let's, let's, let's redo those. And, you know, it became a war between the tobacco industry and big insurance. And those were, you know, two bit, very, very heavy hitters. And in big insurance won, but it was limited. Um, that would have never happened if it wasn't for, for, for big insurance, you know, that we would still, you know, we'd, we'd still be having cartoons and uh, selling, you know, trying to market uh, cigarettes to, to kids, you know, up, up front. And that's, you know, that's where we are with a lot of this stuff. It, uh, where, what was the topic we were talking about before this, before I got off on my tangent? <laughs> we're talking about uh, discrediting. Discrediting, uh, crap. What were we talking about? I went off on, in a corner and I forgot where I was. Well, we were talking about the election. The and- election, money, uh, money. Yeah, basically it's, it's. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, vaccinations. That's That that was the, what I wanted to bring into it. I got to take okay. a shot at vaccinations. I did this on my, my channel on marksargent.com, but I, I want to give you a little, just a little hit of it, which is the whole, the, the reason why vaccination, this whole issue is not going to go away anytime soon, or you're not going to see any class action lawsuits is because there is no health insurance company on the people's side. So, because when you, you know, if you have a child and they have, you know, the whole, the whole autism thing happens, you, the health insurance companies, you know, you're basically on your own, you know? Yeah. There's, there's some insurance companies, they'll be able to help you out. But for the most part, it's, you know, you're, you have to deal with it. And there's no big player to go after it. So it's big pharma versus who? The, right. the average person on the street? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, big pharma is going to stomp you into the ground. And big pharma is not dumb either. They know the whole vaccination thing. If anyone doesn't know what the hell we're talking about, they want, I can boil down the vaccination thing for you really, really easy. And that is because I'm older. When I grew up, there were very few vaccinations. So the complications between let's say there were six vaccinations, right? Between vaccinations one through six and all the different blood types, because there's eight blood types in, in our civilization, you can figure those out. You can figure out the side effects fairly easy. But now, if you have, what, 30 vaccinations? You have to go all the combinations, one through 30, and all the blood types. Well, let's say vac, vax, uh, I'll just call it vax, vax two and vax 15 have a complication if they're mixed in a male you know young male you know we're not even getting into ethnic you know whether you're black or white or any of the other stuff if there's a complication there and you figure it out later after you've had this drug go to market you can never tell anybody because the second you do you second you admit that your company's done 
that's it. You know, you, you, you know, the, 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 there will be a massive lawsuit and your company will go under. And so the, the rule of thumb is it's the attorney rule with that is until you are proven guilty, you lie and you lie and you lie until they've got you cornered. That's, that's any attorney will tell you this. They, they say, do not admit guilt unless you absolutely have to. Right. And that's what the pharmaceutical companies have done with the vaccination thing. They've, they've, they, that's the rule. It's like, look, they, they know, they know. Th- I'm sorry, go ahead. I said they pay everybody out. That's it. Yeah. Well, if, but now they are, they're not, who are you going to pay out? There's nobody, there's no class action suit against it. And people say, well, Vax doesn't exist. I'm going, really? Type in vaccinations, two words into YouTube, vaccinations and autism, and then watch, see if you can get through 30 minutes of parents freaking out on videos because they are not shy about it. And it's, uh, it's a sad, sad thing to watch, which is why the whole De Niro, you know, and they got to De Niro, you know, De Niro had his film festival and, you know, they, they were going to release it. And you know how that conversation went. Some, one of big pharma is called De Niro and says, look, you have a lot to lose and we have deeper pockets than you. We'll drive you into the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you may, you may win eventually, but it'll take years and we'll make you seem like you're insane before it's over. Your, your legacy will be gone. And it, you know, no, and it, I'm sure they said it nicer than that with some some flowery words. But mm-hmm. that was it. And then you know, and De Niro on national television, no, uh, we're gonna pull it because of blah blah. You know, that's a bunch of crap. I, I felt bad, but at the same time, he did. He I had felt a lot bad to lose too because um, <clears throat> and this is you know, it's something that is you know personal to me. But um, you know, my son when he was a couple months old and had his uh, his immunizations yeah. uh, a day or two after had three seizures Ugh. and at the time I mean I didn't know anything about vaccines having anything to do with it and so he's now 16 um, but he's always had a bit of a learning disability if you will Yikes. and you know so recently when I started hearing about this I said well let me see if there's anything that we can do well of course there's a three-year statute of limitations yeah. so I mean yeah. there, there's even you know ropes of you getting any kind of um, return on that but uh, so it hit me personally and again i still say to everybody you need to do your own research yep. don't ever yep. listen to anybody else telling you what to do with your kids um but you know look into it and i'm not somebody who says oh we shouldn't have any vaccines either because some of them maybe have been uh helped prevent oh sure 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 but- I, i'm the same way it's like yeah don't it's not that i don't uh, think that any vaccinations are, are good for you i'm just saying that parents should have the option of picking and choosing Right. Their, their combinations, because eventually, if you if you give them that option, they're going to weed out. You know, there will the, through the grapevine, through the rumor mill, they will find out which ones. It's like, yeah, dude, to twenty this, you know, twenty two and twenty nine. Do not combine those ever, ever, ever. And right, you know, and you shouldn't have the company that makes the vaccine being the one who tests it and has to yeah. submit the report. They say, okay, we tested it and everything's fine. Nothing happens to your kids, and yeah, it gets yeah. passed through. And then down the road, somebody finds out that maybe there was a connection. Yeah. And, you know, that's terrible. I mean, it's not the way, but that's what happens when you run this kind of a, um, you know, capitalistic um, enterprise where everybody's out to make every dollar they can. Believe yeah. me, it doesn't matter. Um, and I worked for a company like that. I worked for CVS. Um, I could tell that when we were selling uh, medication with PSE in it, that we weren't properly um, screening the people who were buying it. And if anybody yeah. knows about that, that's how you make meth is by using PSE. And we weren't doing a good job. Well, CVS didn't care. Well, eventually we got in trouble with the state of California and they were fined $75 million and CVS just paid it and went, went about their business. Yeah. Whereas if I, I run an online bookstore, if I sold a rock of meth, a little tiny one to a neighbor, <laughs> I'm done for my life. Yeah. My business is gone. I'm in jail. My career's over. Everything, you know, everything I've ever done is gone. Yeah. But when you're a company like CVS, you don't even care. They, they probably contributed to the making of of tons of meth and they just pay the 75 million dollar fine and go out about their business that's the kind of place we live in there's you know it's just terrible because they should be held responsible for that they knew what they were doing was wrong and they didn't they didn't stop they just waited until they got in trouble and that's just the way everything's run you see it with enron and these people who's the one yeah enron right oh yeah enron yeah don't who had the oil spill though recently oh bp oh bp yeah, they got fined something like four billion dollars and just paid it, and they, now they're they're going about their business. It's it's nothing to them because these companies keep little side accounts where they store this money just in case something like this ever happens. But when a company gets fined four billion dollars, they should be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> I no knew a company. Um, going. 
I knew a company called, because uh, I used to in install uh, time and attendance software, which isn't time travel software. It's it's just timekeeping. And I, there was, I used to use it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, there was a company out in uh, Oklahoma called Chance Industries, and they, were, they make amusement park rides. And they have an attorney, and you can imagine why, they have an attorney basically on retainer that all he does is contact people and fly around to different carnivals around the country and pay people off for it's like oh yeah you know i broke my finger on your ride you know okay fine you get eighteen thousand dollars you know oh i i fractured my leg fine you know forty forty thousand dollars and he would lowball you know because you know a lot of people that go to carnivals it's like it wouldn't wouldn't be hard it's like all he has to do is size them up it's yeah, like yeah you're a goldfish yeah yeah <laughs> It's exactly thirty percent off ribs at the local diner. Wow. And eat your corn. I'm in. <laughs> exactly. I get my other kid hurt too. The um, no, it was, but that's what he did. And yeah, there's there's lots of legal departments out there that have really, really. You can imagine the tobacco industry and big pharma, and they're they're set up to defend themselves if necessary. And uh, Enron, of course, well, that was different. And Enron was just a scam from, from second one. Although Enron, I, I like to use this as an example for people that say that when they, when they say that, oh, well, government would never lie to you. I go, well, then who would? Like corporations? Would corporations ever lie to you? You know, because Enron never happened. You know, watch the documentary on Enron. It is heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. They just destroyed people. Um, hey, let me, let me do this because, unfortunately, I, I do have some I've got to do eventually. Uh, the we want well, I want to cover real quickly the the men who believe the Earth is flat. Yeah, let's go to that. I'll uh, pull it up. So, what uh, Jaron's going to bring up is an article that was sent to me because most of the time, you know, I, I yes, I do quite a bit of my own research, but I gen people generally will find it faster than me. So I will get an email and it's like, oh yeah, you look at this this article. So there was this article in a um, Australian magazine called Gizmodo. And it was called The Men Who Believe the Earth is Flat. And it was published on the 12th. And it was really interesting. I read through it and it was talking about this doctor down in Sydney who was very, you know, high, high profile doctor and well to do, successful, um, uh, you know, wife and kids and the whole nine yards. And he believes that the earth is flat and he used to be in conspiracies. And now he's, and it was written in, a, it was about as objectively as you could write it. Where it's like, kind of like the, the guy that wrote the article couldn't really make sense of it all. He's going, look, this right. guy has got it all together, but he believes the earth is flat. Does that make him crazy? Or does it mean that he know you know like the like the Illuminati card game? Does he know something that other people don't know? And it really got into the interesting stuff, you know, especially his relationship with his wife, who is a clinical psychologist, which is hilarious because you know she she's the earth is round. She tells me it's bloody round. I've seen pictures. Exactly, she's seen <laughs> pictures, and since she's trained scientifically, whereas a doctor, eh, not as much. Um, she's she's. Her, her first reaction is going to be, well, the person must be, there must be something wrong with the person if they have a view that doesn't fit the general, you know, play on words here, worldview. And that's where the article was a really, you know, I did the narrative. You guys want to listen to it. Uh, you know, I, I did it on my channel. It's just a narrative, where, you know, the men who think the earth is flat. Uh, or you could just read the article, then Jaron will probably put the link somewhere. Mm -hmm. But it is an interesting, interesting read. And the guy in the picture there, that's not, that's not the doctor, by the way. Um, that is the um, founding director of the University of Queensland Critical Thinking Project. This guy? Yeah, that guy. It, it says right to, very, to, the, to the left of him, it says who that guy is. I thought that guy was a doctor too, and it's not. In fact, they don't show the picture of the doctor right. in here. I thought that was, that was interesting. You, know, you could have gotten the picture of the, the doctor and Possibly the wife. his name isn't John. I don't know. Well, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it might maybe be his real know. name. Yeah, maybe might. his name is John Doe. It's, exactly but it was it's a long article and it's and it's well worth the read because it kind of gives you a feel of how how people have to deal with family members and friends i mean i get emails every single day about the the conflicts that in fact i, I got an email that, that i just read recently it'll be up on the the emails for thing i'm going to put up after this is over mm -hmm. where the guy says look he, he's on the verge of divorce with his wife because she thinks he's absolutely out of his mind and yeah, no, it definitely strains relationships in that, you know, you can understand why we were all conditioned to believe a certain thing. And, um, 
you know, some of us, it's just easier to kind of get over that hump. And I know if it wasn't for my wife and I breaking down everything that we had known and just saying, that's it. We're wiping everything clear. We're going to start from scratch. Yeah. We're going to prove each thing before we move to the next level. And it just so happens we got stuck right at that first, first level of where we live. And, um, you know, it makes sense, but you're right. It totally can ruin relationships. It can, um, cause strife. Um, but you know, the one good thing about being a flat earther, you know, besides the fact that I said that we're growing in numbers every day, yeah. the other thing is, is that it's, it feels good to be open to tell people, I don't stop anybody from looking into anything. In fact, I'll tell people, go watch all of Red's rhetoric videos. I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because once you know the truth, then all that stuff should just be more evidence. You can watch any globe believer program. You can watch any sci-fi, you know, video, you can watch any universe um, documentary because all it will do is re solidify the fact that it's just words and numbers. It's not reality. Yeah. And that feels good. And when you read this article, it's also um, really good, even though it's written from a global believer perspective. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me read the last two paragraphs and there's no spoiler sure. here um, because it is, because it's positive. I, I've always said that the flat earth, what makes it different from all other conspiracies is yeah, I know conspiracy guys are dark and brooding and they want to be like Heath Ledger and the Batman, but they, it's really, uh, it, it gives a lot of hope. And so the last, the last two paragraphs go something like this on a certain level, it's easy to be seduced by the idea of a flat earth. It draws you in a tractor beam of luring ideas and concepts, a flat earth. It all but confirms the concept of a creator, our collective hope for something more than this. It places us humanity back at the center of the universe, no longer hurtling through the void of an infinite universe beyond our measure and comprehension, no longer at the mercy of physical forces beyond our control, no longer Carl Sagan's pale blue dot, no longer insignificant. There's a comfort in that. John is correct. There's a beauty in that because now John looks at the stars. We sit in hushed awe, daunted and humbled by the scope of the universe and our place in it. But John's stars move differently. He sits on his porch, he watches the sun set, a sun we no longer orbit. He is comforted, perhaps resolute. In the place where he sits, in this precise moment in time, John's stars revolve around him. I mean, that was poetic. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, when he wrote that, I mean, you could tell that even the guy, I'm wondering if this guy will do a follow-up thing later down the road, where, you know, of course he's got his career to think about, but... <laughs> It, it's true. I mean, when people go down this road, they, they there's some people it really, really strikes them. It's uh, it, it brings uh, uh, something out in them uh, that they never thought they had or something they had felt they had lost. And one of the reasons that I like um, having you on the show or talking with um, other people who have made videos is I know that you have gotten the same emails that I have. And I think it's it's something that others don't know happens right yeah. so you've gotten those emails from people that have basically just poured it all out there for you told you what they were up to before i've had people say they were into drugs i've had people say they've killed people i've had some of the craziest emails from people saying this is what i needed this is what um has you know for the first time in my life has settled with me this is something that feels right that um has answered all my questions and, you know, I know a lot of people don't get to see those. And a lot of these people who email them don't want me saying their name or even saying what they're saying. Sure, so, sure. but at the same time, I know that you've gotten those emails and it totally changes your perspective. As much hate as I get, um, I can see, you know, 50 comments that are hateful. The one person who says, I was an atheist. I believed what science was telling me. I figured there's no way there can be a God because look at this universe and look how big it is and look at how far the sun is and it doesn't make any sense. But because you guys have brought this up, it's allowed me to come back home, come back to um, understand, you know, we may not know who God is. We may not know uh, what his plans are, but at least we know that what we were being taught that took us away from that idea isn't necessarily the truth. It's just a lot of words and numbers. Okay. So I know that's, you've, you've had to have some emails like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, in fact, what's, what's weird is, yeah, as you know, I don't, I really try to avoid the comment sections because, you know, it turns into uh, this, what, the saying that I still will use, and again, it's a t-shirt, and that is, I used to believe that uh, if you can't say something nice, you know, don't say anything at all. 
now I would like to revise that. And that is, if you can't say something nice, you're probably on the YouTube forums. <laughs> that's what it, that's what it is. It's you want to see the bottom barrel of scum. Oh my god, people just look any of my videos and you'll just see them. thrash each other. But but I will say this: ninety nine percent of the emails I get, and the same percentage on phone calls are all positive. You know, it, yeah, I mean, it could be just as simple as oh yeah, I liked your work, thank you very much. To mm-hmm. two pages of how flat Earth, not necessarily me, but how flat Earth has brought them back to some center. Not necessarily mm-hmm. any one religion, but definitely spirituality to where now they think, you know what, uh, you know, they'll go along with what my little mantra, which is I can't, I cannot do anything malicious to anyone ever right. again. I can't do it. I, and I, I totally get it because I'm following the astronauts thing on this one where the astronauts, you know, wouldn't lie on the Bible. I get that now. <laughs> so yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. You don't, don't you dare. Not no, now. I'm, I'm the same way. I just, uh, it, and it was, I don't know if it was flat earth because it was kind of right before that, but it really does um, make more sense now all of a sudden that, yeah, I couldn't hurt anybody. I couldn't steal from anybody. Yeah. And, you know, I had a guy yesterday write me this big, long thing saying, you know, you're doing this for money. And if you, now that you've learned how to make videos, why don't you go make videos doing, because I told him, hey, I could be making videos doing something else and getting more views and more money according to you. But I'm doing this because it's what, needs to be done it's what feels right and i'm doing this for myself and other people and he said you're full of it why don't you just go off and make videos about you know some other subject and cereal box eating yeah right exactly and what i said to him was i said that's the difference between the kind of person you are and the kind of person i am is that you're thinking why don't you go make more money why don't you take what you've learned and go do something else where i'm saying this is not the reason i'm doing it is not for money the reason i'm doing it is because it needs to be done we're being lied to on the most grand scale imaginable yeah. we are really getting um you know we're just getting stepped on and the problem is i see a whole world who just wants to bow their heads to scientists and say these guys know it all and my yeah. thing is question them we, yeah. if it's science then it needs to stand up to scrutiny and it sucks that you know i've had somebody else say you guys just want the earth to be flat like what are you talking about <laughs> I, want, I want the first 35 years of my life to be worthless i want yeah everything I've ever learned in school to be a complete joke and a lie. Oh, yeah. I mean, like You want the moon landings to be faked. I said, I do not. I, you think I want my country to be the ones that were responsible for lying to the world about going to the freaking moon. Oh, yeah. That's not a cool thing. That's, yeah. but it's just unfortunate that it's the truth. And so what am I supposed to do? Be like everyone else and just say, Oh, well, I'm not going to pay attention to that. I'm just going to go through my life. And no, forget that. That's ridiculous. We, we have a right to know where we freaking live. Yeah. We we all pitched in a dollar for NASA to go up there and take a look, and they're supposed to come back and say what we what it is, and we're all okay. But you're not supposed to go up there and lie to the entire world. It's yeah. a joke, and you know these people thinking that we have all these other reasons for doing it. Or oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. even I'm even sure Joe even Joe came out and said that in that last thing. He's going these. That was that was one of the reasons I made that video. Where oh, I, you're I was right. like, he was, saying, that. he was saying that he was so desperate. He's like, look, they don't even believe it. The leaders of flat Earth. Uh, the, the, the people money. that make the most videos, they don't even believe it themselves. They're just doing it for the money. I'm just going, where did you come up with that? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's... really? Because if we, yeah, if it's about the money, like you said, there are way more things on YouTube. Especially you could... now that I've learned how to make videos. Yeah. I mean, I know that I could go make videos on any subject that I wanted to. Sure. And many more subjects that would not give me the hate, the the bad mark on your name, all the things that Flat Earth bring with it you know and that's the truth but i mean for them to say oh these guys are doing it for the money it's like crazy there's somebody who said one time that my wife and i faked the four mile experiment and i was like yeah that's it that's my brilliant idea i'm gonna fake a four mile experiment say the earth is flat like nobody will ever catch on to that one (laughs) or if i was gonna if i was gonna do that why did i make all my videos creative commons license you know, right. why, why did, why did I not care when a couple of those guys, you know, the one guy's got like 1.8 million on the clues mashup and the other guy's got 1.5 million on the clues mashup. It's like, I don't care. I go good for them. It gets the word out. I get, I get more emails and phone calls from those two videos alone than I do from my original clues. Believe and that's what I tell people too, you know, sh- share my stuff, whatever, re- repost it. Sure. Um, I don't care. You know, I want the truth out there. Yeah. That's that's it. But then again, you know, people who will say, well, your videos are monetized. It's like, yeah, because YouTube says, hey, we'll give you money. And all you got to do is click this button. And all yeah, your that, all your viewers need to do is wait five seconds. It's like, yeah, yeah. okay, well, I'm going to try that because 
Why would I not? I wasn't, you know, I didn't monetize for the first 15 months. That's a long time in YouTube years. Right. And I only did it because YouTube emailed me directly. And they said, are you sure you don't want to monetize? <laughs> and they just, and they were bugging me about it. I was like, really? It's like, all right, fine. You know, and, and then I did it, but I ignored all the other, I don't know. Did you ever sign up for any of those network guys that you get letters no. from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're all fake, but I, I mean, I know other people do have network connections or whatever. Right. I don't even really and, know. By the way, do you see that latest thing that's happening on YouTube? Not to digress and everything, but I do have to go soon. The, um, where YouTube is like coming down, they're like shutting down monetization on some of the bigger channels. Yeah, like, I, had, like, I had a couple of mine done. Really? Mine. Yeah. Wow. Because what? Yeah. It's not advertiser appropriate? Right. That's uh, Yeah, that's their new talk, thing. Yeah, anytime I talk about 9-11, um, they haven't done it with NASA yet, but you know, also the, the crazy thing about NASA is they don't copyright any of their stuff, which is another big tail sign um, that they don't want to own. I don't own those pictures of the moon. <laughs> <You know? laughs> nice. I don't have anything to do with those pictures. Nice. Um, but uh, they, they don't, they've never done anything to those. But anything that I go outside of that, the San Bernardino, anytime I talk about a false flag, that kind of stuff gets knocked down. And um, that, that's all fine, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. But I mean, the thing I told this guy too that was saying, you're doing it for the money. I said, you have to remember, uh, first three months I made videos, you don't make anything. And then the fourth yeah. month I made $4.18. Did I still uh -huh. make videos? And then the third month or fourth month, you make $8.13. It's like, people don't realize, do you think I'm that smart that I'm like, oh, I'm just going to stay doing flat earth videos? Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, like <laughs> flat earth, you know, other people, you know, they're in flat earth will tell you this. It's like, look, out of all the topics, if you want to make money on YouTube, I, it's almost the, almost got to be the, one of the bottom of the barrel topics you could ever choose. Yeah. Because it's, it's yeah, you get hits, but it's, it's, but the word gets out in different ways. It's not like people are, you know, you're not getting millions of hits on your stuff. It's that people replicate your stuff or replicate segments of your stuff. Right. So, which is all I want. I just want the truth. And I would be, you know, I, told, I said this last week, but I would be happy if we never had to do another Globebuster show because tomorrow the truth was released to everybody yeah, yeah. and it was over, you know, and that would be the happiest day for me. I'd be like, great. I don't want, I don't have to do the show anymore. I don't have to make videos about it anymore. We finally have the truth. The problem is, is nobody's getting it and you know you keep putting out the video after video just trying to get people to uh to wake up to the fact that hey we should all be as humanity questioning nasa and these other organizations yeah. it shouldn't matter that uh red's rhetoric thinks they're telling the truth so let's talk shit to all the flat earthers why not just turn around and say nasa these guys over here don't believe you can you prove it because yeah. what the, what are you hurting you're just we're just going to prove what we were all taught in school We'll all feel better. We'll all go back to our lives. Like, okay, thank goodness that the science we were taught is true. Astronomy is true. We live in the vast emptiness of space. We're spinning ball in, you know, in nothingness that's bent by matter, whatever. And you know, if that's the case, then, then we should all feel fine that we proved it, but that's not what's happening. What's happening is we're getting called names. Nobody's bringing any facts. I've yet to see somebody come forward with a here, here's me measuring the earth has, you know, curvature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or or find me the one I'm uh, the one I would use, uh, which is kind of the reverse of what we've done so far. It, throw in a scientist is show me an object from across a body of water, with you know within reason of course, um, under let's say under a hundred miles that we can't see. You know, for, show me something that should be on the other side of the hill. That, that you can't see no matter what optics. You know, you, uh, Rob Skeeb did that with a professor where he said that, oh yeah, there's, I think it was down in California, where he's going, yeah, should I be able to see this point from this point? And the professor says, no, you shouldn't. And Rob says, I can. Right. And w show me that where that ever, ever happens. And that I, right there should, you know, be indicative of something where it's like, look, if you can't find like the, the lighthouse, for example, right. show me a lighthouse 80 miles away that I can't see, no matter what camera I use, no matter what telescopic lens I use, show me something that right. I can't see. And that's not there. And that's yeah. and they'll just bring in refraction. Well, you can see it because of refraction. And that's where I feel like people who are on the fence or anybody who's looking into this will yeah. see those things and go, hold on a second. Now, why does Globe get to use all of these terms? I mean, they get to whatever they need. If it's yeah. refraction, if it's reflection, if it's uh, in inverts, if it's you yeah. name it they will employ anything and because they are science they are the scientists we're all just supposed to go oh my bad you know yeah. but that opens everybody up for 
deception. And that's the whole problem is that um, people have a right not to be lied to. I think there's even a law. It's called the right to know. That, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is the right to know. Um, yeah. There was a Norman Rockwell painting literally called that, a right to know. I've actually employed that uh, twice in blocking uh, copyright strikes, which were from people who made documentaries like uh, Smarter Every Day, that guy Destin, yep. uh, made a documentary about the space station. And I put him in my video and he tried to claim copyright. And I went back at him and said, absolutely not. I am. It is the public's right to know if I'm changing your content. You put it out there as the space station is real. I'm taking your content and saying the space station is fake. That is that is fair use. And it even goes beyond fair use. It goes into the public's right to know. Yeah. You made a video where you're stating something is the truth. And I have every right to take that information and show people that it's not true that yeah. you misinterpreted your results because otherwise people could just make videos about falsities and just put them out all over the internet and nobody could retract them it's true. because it's true. you'd be like, Oh, I can't, I can't talk about that because it's copyright. No, no, no bullshit. You can talk about it as long as you're saying you can't use his video and say, I'm going to make money off Destin's video. No, I'm showing people and saying, look at, this is the conclusion he came to. I'm coming to the conclusion that this is an astronaut that should not be saying he doesn't know the procedure for if there's a leak on the station, the guy's been up there for a year, you know, and these are the kind of things that people need to realize is there's so much information in every single ISS film and every single documentary about the universe. There is so much information that you should take. And have you seen the principal Mark? Oh uh, yeah, I have. Yeah. I have. And I mean, that's something I keep recommending to people because again, I'm not afraid that people are going to, Oh, it's a geocentrism movie. That means the earth is a ball. You know, go ahead and watch it. It doesn't mean the earth's a ball. But all their other observations are telling you that what science has done to, or what scientists have done to science or scientism yeah, is yeah. simply every time, and it makes sense to me, every time that they had an option, they had to push it in any direction that means that there cannot possibly be a creator. So if you've got a choice, well, we're either the center of the universe or we've got to make something up. They have to make something up. How can science possibly say we are the center of the universe? Immediately, they have put themselves in a position where they can't answer the reason why it, it has to be deferred to a creator. There's no, there's no natural physics reason why the earth would be the center of the universe. Yep. So they cannot have that be a result. Well, anytime you've got science, who's got certain rules where you're testing things, but the results can't lead to this. That's the problem. Yep. That's where we have really, uh, and they've done that for, 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, yeah. um, ever since Einstein, where anything that would dare call anything outside into 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 play, they can't do. So they have to keep forcing it. And now we got dark matter and dark energy and 95% of the universe is we can't even observe, yeah. all yeah. because anything else leads people to believe, hmm, maybe this is not all accidental stardust explosions. Yep, agreed. Hey, man, I hate to do this I'll to you, but you go. I, I got to run. You, uh, um, you know I mean? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, a quick shout out, if I, if I may, um, you to uh, Melody up in Canada. I hope you're listening. And uh, yeah, other than that, you know, everyone knows where to go. Just just type in, if you want to find me with anything, just go into any search engine, type in Flat Earth Clues. Type, type in Mark. Type in Mark. Yeah, type in Mark Sargent. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be fun, too, because anyone, yeah, I, I feel bad if anyone's ever looking for me. It's like, holy smokes, what's been Mark, Mark been up to, like, old classmates? <laughs> I know. I feel the same way. Like, if anybody looks at my name, just searches it on the internet, they're going to be like, what the hell is going on with this I guy? know. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> it still uh, pisses me off, too. If you search my name, the first thing that comes up is Res Rhetoric's video, which is like, Jaronism full of shit number 74 or something. <laughs> <laughs> like the thing that comes up every time. I'm like, come on, that's the video you got to bring up. Nice. Anyways. Nice. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you having on. Um, hope to talk to you soon. I know we don't talk uh, enough, but uh, I do listen to your show sometimes when I'm dozing off. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I know everyone does. Like I'm in your head. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, have a good one. You too. See you.